What's up, everybody? Back for another monthly recap live stream. So this is the second, no, sorry, <laughs> second, third time I have done this. I started this earlier this year, and basically, I thought of, uh, I, I thought it was a good way to kind of like recap what I've been drinking over the past uh, month. And um, you know, not everybody watches all of the reviews, so it's like let's do a monthly recap live stream. I thought it was also a good way to force myself to live stream every single month. And the first month I was joined by Kyle over at No Hype Beer Reviews. The second month I was joined by Rod over at Rod J Beer Ventures. This month, however, I'm flying solo, and the reason for that you may notice from the title of uh, today's live stream is that I want to talk about uh, my channel's sixth anniversary, which is upcoming on Monday, along with kind of discussing beer bucket lists. And actually, I, for the first time, made a beer bucket list. I didn't spend a ton of time on it, but I um, went on Tapped and just like basically made a, um, a list and put all the beers that I think I want to try at some point. Uh, we have almost 20. There's 19. So I thought it'd be a good way to like discuss it with you guys. You guys want to tell me what's on your beer bucket list and whatnot. Uh, we'll get to that. That'll be towards the end of the live stream. But I kind of wanted to do everything all encompassing because my channel six anniversary is actually on April 1st. That's when I started the channel. Yes, I started on April Fool's Day because I'm an idiot. But we'll talk a little bit about the history of why I started the live stream on uh, or started, started the channel on April 1st. But first, let's go to comments. There are no comments. There's no comments yet because it just started. Also, we got six, now seven people watching. So chime in, guys. What, what have you been drinking? What are you drinking right now? What are you drinking, uh, you know, the past couple of weeks, the past month? Because that's what this monthly recap live stream is all about. And like I said, later on, I want to hear from you guys and your beer bucket list and whatnot. Right now, uh, Sam Smalley over at Short and Stout Beer Review is also doing a live stream at Easter live stream. So um, I'm going to probably join his after I do this live stream for like an after party for myself. But in the meantime, we are just going to kind of chill here and uh, hopefully have a very, very enjoyable live stream. So I'm going to kick it off basically talking about the anniversary of my channel. So if you're somebody who has just started following the channel, channel in like the last year or so, you might not know uh, why I started my channel on April uh, 1st of 2018. So the reason I started on April Fool's Day is because, and this is going to go back further, I started watching BeerTube in 2009. Yeah, 2009. And I started getting into beer the same year. Uh, over the next couple of years, I watched a lot of different beer tubers. In addition to it, I uh, watched, um, you know, I drank a lot of different beers. I was getting into craft beer, so I was trying a bunch of stuff. Well, 2012 came around, and at that point, I actually, the coolest thing YouTube used to have, and hopefully they bring it back at some point, is they actually had like a private messaging system or a, you know a direct messaging system where you could send you know messages to you know fellow uh, you know uh, you know YouTubers like it was cool and now you have to go through other social media or like email or whatever so what I would do is um, you know I would send some messages to some folks uh, you know about their channel occasionally and whatnot and I enjoyed it and then one day I was just like I'm gonna send it to a bunch of different beer tubers I watch. And I'm going to let them know I'm going to shout, shout them out in my first video that I do on my channel. That was 2012, keep in mind. Never happened. Never made the channel. I became friends with a lot of beer tubers from 2012 onward. Um, I actually have reviewed beers on other people's channels uh, You know, in that time frame. I've uh, went to beer festivals with uh, viewers of different beer tuber channels, beer tubers themselves. Uh, and I was very entrenched in the beer tubing community. Uh, but in 2018, on April 1st, April Fool's Day, I wanted to kind of troll my beer tubing friends. Uh, so I named the, the name of the channel is the Beer Patrol. A lot of people ask me, um, oh, you're in Pennsylvania, right? No, that PA is just, instead of spelling patrol out, I made it troll as a troll a, 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 instead of spelling patrol correctly. So no, I'm not in Pennsylvania. I'm in Buffalo, New York. Um, it's funny how many people uh, it's just, just assumed I was in PA. But I made the channel name. I made the channel. I posted a couple um, videos the first day. And nobody thought I was actually being serious. And it turns out I was. Because here we are almost six years later and over 2,000 beer reviews. And my channel's going strong. And I'm enjoying every second of it. Although I have people ask me occasionally, like, do you still enjoy beer tubing? Do you still enjoy having a channel? I would say, and I'm not bullshitting here. I'm being dead honest with you. I think I enjoy beer tubing now as much as I did when I first started. Like, um, the community is great for the most part. I have a lot of beer tubing friends and the viewers and people who watch the channel. I have daily conversations with a lot of different viewers of the channel. Like we talk on uh, un untapped Instagram emails, uh, you know, even like just straight up text messages. 
And it's awesome. I never thought in a million years that people uh, would watch the channel and want to discuss beer with me. And I pretty much talk beer every single day. So I love it. I absolutely love being a beer tuber. And uh, most years for the anniversary of my channel on April 1st, I'll do a live stream or I'll post a special beer review. And I'm going to do that this year. I'm not doing a live stream. I'm doing the live stream today because this weekend's Easter. And that hasn't happened as far as April 1st falling on the Monday after Easter in a long time. So um, for me specifically, I'm going to post a special side-by-side -side comparison review uh, on Monday for the sixth anniversary of my channel. Uh, it's two beers that I've had numerous times before, but never did a proper side-by-side. -side. It's a fucking incredibly long review, like almost 30 minutes. So only the diehards are probably going to watch the entire thing, honestly. And you probably shouldn't watch more than like probably half of it if you do watch it. Uh, but yeah, I'm also posting a Dingus Day review. I don't know if any of you out there are familiar with Dingus Day, but it's basically, it's a widely associated with uh, Polish and Polish-American uh, folk. Uh, I'm quarter Polish. I'm Polish-American, but I'm quarter Polish. My grandma was full on 100% uh, Polish. So we celebrate it here in Buffalo, New York. Uh, Buffalo and I think Cleveland have like two of the biggest Dingus Day uh, celebrations. So in the morning, I'm going to post a Dingus Day uh, review. It's a Polish beer from Combs. And then later in the day, you get the anniversary beer. So um, I'm looking forward to uh, posting both of those uh, reviews. I've already reviewed both beers. But I thought today I would do a live stream just kind of talking about the anniversary while I do the monthly recap. And then we'll go into the beer bucket list. So this will probably be a couple hour uh, show. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. And like I said, I, I'm all about interaction. If you watch the channel, if you follow the channel, if you post comments, you know I respond to 99% of the comments. I love the interaction. I love the back and forth. So please comment and, and let me know what you're drinking today. Let me know what you've been drinking lately that you've enjoyed. You know, suggest some different beers. I take suggestions, um, recommendations. Uh, so yeah, anyway, John Rafferty says, been enjoying Trogues Little Nader. So I, we um, Kyle over at No High Beer Reviews, a for mention Kyle. And uh, Keith over at uh, 93 Lumber, spelled out, of course. Uh, we all did a live review of uh, Little Nader, and it was delicious. So I'm right there with you, John. It's a, it's a fantastic beer. I'm glad that it came in 12 packs for people, you know, concession the beer for, a, I think it was like 19, 20 bucks. You really can't beat it. So nice to hear someone else is enjoying it, because I thought that was extremely well done by Trogues. Um, Chance says, Trogues is sold in Connecticut, Massachusetts, but not Rhode Island. So it's not long drives to get it, but it's very weird when it be sold in all three. Yeah, so Chaz is the de facto um, distribution guy when it comes to my channel. Him and I have so many good discussions about distribution. I think him and I can pretty much sum up distribution for craft beer at this point as, uh, for lack of a better term, fucked up. Like, it's just totally, it's gnarly nowadays. It's like, nothing makes sense anymore. I'll give you a, a perfect example is, I was told by multiple individuals here in New York State that Firestone Walker was pulling out of the state. And then when I went into my local bottle shop a couple days ago to pick up beers, uh, shelfy beers for the month of April 2024, lo and behold, there's a couple of brand new Firestone Walker beers. They're XPA, which I am reviewing as a shelfy in the month of April, and Parabola just shows up. Like, like I don't get distribution. I'll never. And speaking of distribution, here's Billy. Billy, what's up, buddy? Um, I did send you an email because I know you'd like to be contacted that way when I do a live show because you're not, you know, you always get the notifications and whatnot. So perfect to segue into this. Billy is out in California in a remote part of California, and he doesn't even get Sam Adams where he lives. Like, I just assume Sam Adams just fucking distributed every single place in the U.S. Apparently not. So when I do price point and availability at the end of the reviews and I'm like, oh, you know, here's the cost of this and here's uh, where you should be able to find this. Nah, I don't, I don't know about any of that stuff anymore at all. So don't listen to me when it comes to distribution. The best way to find out if a beer is distributed in your area, go to the, um, you know, go to the, your local beer store or bottle shop or grocery store, wherever you buy beer, see if they have it, talk to maybe a manager or somebody there, and also go to the beer finder. A lot of, a lot of the breweries are doing better with their beer finder. Some of them are still pretty broken. You'll say, you know, you'll, Say, hey, do I get this beer in my area? They'll tell you 10 different places. None of them carry it. But it's the easiest way, honestly, to uh, to figure out if you get beers in your area. Uh, Billy says, I'm a Firestone Walker Beer Club member. Yeah, I know. I know, Billy. I saw that uh, Weldworks and uh, Firestone Walker beer that you sent to Kyle and that you're drinking for Easter tomorrow. I'm super jelly. Let me just tell you that. I, I know that's probably getting no distribution, but that sounds like a fantastic beer. Uh, Chaz then says, my local bottle shops have too much old beer when they get something new and it's like discovering gold. And yeah, I think that's a big issue, especially for places that don't rotate their stock or can't rotate their stock quickly. You find out that a lot of them will just sit on, you know, six month old beer, nine month old beer, a year old beer. Like I've been wanting to pick up High Life from um, Cigar City. 
the and I don't want to buy a tire six pack of it because I'm not I, I don't really drink six and 12 packs anymore because you know my health issues and I drink one beer a day typically. The freshest highlight I have seen in the last two months is from like August of last year. And if I'm reviewing highlight to review it because I've never reviewed it, even though I've had that beer so many times before. I'm not drinking a seven month old highlight, you know, or a six month old highlight. That's just stupid, but I can't find a single of it. That's like, you know, canned even last fall, like they're all significantly old. So it's insane to me. I don't know. Um, it's ridiculous. All right. So let's, uh, so we talked about the channel's anniversary, got that out of the way. Like I said, a couple of reviews being posted on Monday. Uh, while you guys are all enjoying your April fools, we don't celebrate April fools on the beer patrol. Cause it's the anniversary. You got to respect the anniversary. Maybe some year. I will actually post an April Fool's a video. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the monthly recap. So very simple how this works. Um, I just bring up all the videos from on my YouTube page that you guys will see if you go to the, the videos uh, section of my uh, channel. And I just hover my mouse over each video and briefly talk about the beers and you know what I thought about them, the rating I gave them, and so on and so forth. It's a pretty simple concept. Like I said, I thought this would be a good way to kind of recap what I've been drinking over the past month. Uh, the reality is not everybody's going to watch every video. So if you missed some of the videos or you didn't watch because they were significantly longer than you'd like to uh, you know, watch a YouTube video, this is a quick way in a good half an hour, 45 minutes to recap what I drank. So if you watch this, you get an idea of the beer that I've been consuming and my overall opinions of, of certain beers. So we are going to bring that up now. It's I'm going to go to like a small a little, um, I'm going to share my screen here and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to figure it out here. So let's see something real quick. Should be fine. Here we go. Let me know if this works. Uh, I, I guess I can see if it works here or not. All right. So as you can see, we got the screen up, and the first beer that I reviewed in the month of March was the iconic Dogfish Head 90 Minute Imperial IPA. So. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you, if you've been drinking craft beer for, you know, the last 10, 15 years, you've had this beer before. Um, it's a classic to me. It's not my favorite. It'll never be my favorite, but I say respect to classics when it comes to craft beer. Unless you don't like the style, then whatever. And I, I totally get it. But 90 Minute uh, Imperial IPA is a classic. Um, I thought it was just as good as I remember it. Although I, I found it to maybe be a little bit more malt forward than I anticipated. It wasn't like super old or anything. It was relatively fresh, uh, but it was a little bit more malt driven. I gave it a 4.1 out of 5, which I think is a pretty good score for an Imperial, Imperial IPA that's old school plus, you know, price point pretty fantastic as a whole. So, you know, uh, 90 Minute is uh, one of those classics that I think everybody should try at least once in their life. You might not like it, but I think, again, like many beers uh, in the craft beer world, uh, you at least respect. I respect Dogfish Head. They're one of the first big breweries to kind of do weird stuff, right? Um, they they do off kilter stuff and they do it well a lot of times. Nowadays they're not as creative because everybody's doing everything, but I still think they're a fucking really good brewery. Uh, next we have another iconic beer. I did these back to back, uh, not purposely. It just happened that way. Um, Al Smith, their Speedway Stout. So this to me is like the de facto um, OG imperial coffee stout like when people say hey what's your favorite coffee stout i would always just say i would default to speedway stout it's the best imperial coffee stout no frills talking you know no crazy adjuncts no barrel aging just a no frills uh coffee stout and my i want to say my can was like five months old that i actually uh reviewed and it was still absolutely phenomenal like the coffee was still vibrant didn't have any kind of like you know that green pepper vibe with older coffee it was just fantastic i gave it a 4.55 out of a five which is you know an excellent uh, close to world-class beer and probably stylistically it is a world-class beer for being honest it's just that that is a an amazing beer and again another one that i think everybody should try at least once in their life next from dancing gnome i reviewed their double lustra so this is an imperialized version of their um like flagship uh, American pale ale they call Lustra. And uh, it was good. It was a good double pale ale, double IPA, whatever you want to call it. Um, at the same time, uh, it was also one of those beers where um, it, it kind of left me lacking a little bit in comparison to the pale ale. The pale ale was like kind of mind blowing at five, and I think it was 5.8%. And it's just like, wow. Uh, a hazy pale ale, five point eight percent, could be this flavorful and this delicious. And I remember the mouthfeel being spectacular. However, uh, double lustre, I gave it a four point one five, still a really good score. Just kind of one of those really good double IPAs, but nothing special. I also want to say, not on this page, but I also around this time did this this uh, this live stream 
but I also did some live reviews along with it, which is the Little Nader from Show. So uh, I did that live with Kyle and um, Keith, as I said. I gave that a 4.15 uh, fantastic. Again, fantastic uh, German German style Bach from uh, Trogues. Fantastic beer. I also reviewed from um, Green Sheik their Pizza Cake. Uh, which is a, a West Coast IPA. That was really good collaboration with other half. I gave that a 4.2. And then I also uh, reviewed from, uh, I didn't review this. I just kind of drank this on a stream. Uh, I think it was, it might've been Sammy's stream or maybe Josh's. I can't remember who I joined, but for Quantum, their Josh Fruit series, which is a heavily fruited smoothie sour ale series. I did their strawberry passion fruit and white grape. That was delicious, 465. Like, is it a beer? Is it not a beer? Does it matter? No, but it was a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic drink. So I wanted to mention those two uh, because um, I reviewed those the day before that I posted this Lustra review. Anyway, so the Lustra, good beer, but not anything you know crazier. The next beer, uh, BDCS from Ozark. So I never heard of Ozark. They're out of Arkansas. They're actually located where the original Walmart is. Uh, I forget the, the the Rogers, Rogers, Arkansas. And uh, this BDCS, they're obviously kind of doing the acronym like Bourbon County Brand Star, uh, Stout uh, BCBS. Uh, so this was a bourbon double cream stout. So basically a double cream stout, Asian bourbon barrels. And it was pretty fantastic, especially for a brewery that I knew nothing about going into the review. Um, I gave this beer a 4.3 out of 5. It was pretty fantastic. And they're firmly on my radar. And that's the cool thing about uh, getting beer mails. This beer was sent to me by uh, the Sierra Hotel. Uh, just an awesome dude. Uh, he sent he sent me a lot of crazy hype stuff, but I had no idea this beer existed until the Sierra Hotel sent me it. And uh, now again, they're firmly on my radar. Just a fantastic uh, double cream stout. You don't see a lot of like imperialized cream stouts or milk stouts as as much as you do just like regular uh, imperial stouts. So I thought it was pretty damn good. Next, by the way, I'm drinking uh, Dark a Crater from Boulevard. I just reviewed this one, so if you missed that. Uh, you can watch the replay of the live stream. Next, from Kona, their Longbo uh, Longboard Island Lager. Now, I've had this beer numerous times before. I reviewed it as part of Shelfie Beers for the month of March. And uh, this beer was lacking. It really was. Like, I had some people respond to me like, yeah, that's kind of my, like, you know, go-to, like, crafty um, lager. It wasn't great. It, in fact, it was not for me. It wasn't for me. I, I, there's a lot of macro beers I'd rather have over that beer. Now, Kona... Even though they're they're um, headquartered in Hawaii, like they're brewed in like their their contract brewed at like four different locations in the uh, mainland of the U.S. And I don't know, I just whatever. It was an okay like macro lager. I would never really want to drink it again. And yeah, I'm I I just I was disappointed. And I remember that beer being a little bit better than the bottle I had. So and my my bottle was relatively fresh. So I don't know what happened, but it was uh, just not for me. And then. Uh, we'll, we'll combine the next two, then I'll check comments. But the next two I did for West New York Wednesday, where I try to feature a beer in the West New York area. I did a uh, double feature because for Quantum Brewing Company, uh, they are uh, in Canandaigua, uh, New York. They opened up a new location in downtown Buffalo, New York. So I did a double feature of their beers. I did their Black Lager, which is a German style Schwarzbier. And then their Just Fruit, like I mentioned earlier, I did an, I reviewed another one or drank another one uh, on camera on another live stream. But this one was their Strawberry, Raspberry, and Blood Orange. The Black Lager is probably my favorite like dark lager locally here in the Western New York area. I gave it a uh, 4.3 out of 5. And uh, yeah, it's just extremely well made and just a really good black lager. And then the Just Fruit, again, those three fruits, very simple. The Just Fruit series is literally Just Fruit. They don't put any other adjuncts in it, no lactose, no marshmallow, no vanilla, just those three fruits with a base sour. And I gave that a 4.6 because it was delicious. Also, I want to mention I gave the Longboard Island Lager a 3.2, just so you know how much I uh, really didn't care for that Kona offering. All right, we're going to go look at the... Uh, See if we have any comments here. We have Chaz. He says 60 minutes malt forward, so I'd expect 90 minutes to be malt forward as well. See, 60 minute because it's lower ABV has always come off a little bit more balanced. And yeah, 90 minute, I always expected to be a little bit more malt forward, but it was like, I would say significantly malt forward because that makes it sound like it's bad. But if not, it just, it was a little bit more malt forward. We'll just say that. It, it, did, it, didn't, it didn't have <sighs> the sweetness and the malt character were a little bit more little richer than I anticipated. And, you know, I've had that beer a lot before. So it was just kind of not a shock, but kind of surprised me. Maybe it shouldn't have, but it did. And then Chaz says, Kona Longboard Island at 1099, a six pack is a no for me. Good, good point, Chaz. I didn't even mention, I didn't even mention the price on that um, right now, but 
Yeah, I mean, I can go in and buy a lot of different macros for much cheaper. That I like, I'll give you an example. I'd much rather have like Jenny Cremail over that, and I can buy like a 30 rack of Jenny Cremail for like 16 bucks. I can buy like a 12 pack of it for like $8.99. Like, yes, like that's ridiculous that that beer is that expensive, especially when you take into consideration the price point. Yeah, no, no, thank you. No, thank you for sure. Uh, so appreciate that, Chaz. That's, that was, that's definitely a really good point that I skipped over. Um, next, Prairie Artisan Ales, their Maple Bourbon Barrel Paradise. So this was a uh, a beer brewed with vanilla, and, uh, Imperial Stout brewed with coconut and vanilla aged in maple bourbon barrels. And uh, yeah, it was absolutely delicious. I gave it 4.65 out of 5. Everything I kind of want in Imperial Stout, maybe a bit too too sweet, but really tasty. And uh, I picked it up for obvious reasons. I love coconut. I love maple, maple bourbon. Yeah, maple bourbon barrels are fantastic when you actually get like a maple kind of character from them. But Prairie does awesome barrel aged stuff. So again, not really so surprised too much. Next, a brand new hazy from Southern Tier. There's Citra Fog. Uh, this was um, one of those beers that they they had many years ago. They released uh, Lakeshore Fog. So this is kind of like a play on that, focusing more on Citra hops. And it was all right. I gave it a 3.7 out of 5. I'll be honest with you, and I hate to say this. I got to listen, I got to be 100% honest when I when I do these reviews and talk about it. Southern Tier to me over the past like 3 or 4 years has probably disappointed me more than any other brewery that I have regularly bought stuff from over the past 15 years of drinking craft beer. I used to love Southern Tier with a passion. Their Blackwater series was just amazing when it used to come back in the bombers, like you know, you had your oat and your chocolate and, uh, you know, creme brulee and uh, mocha and all those beers, just absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, they're old school IPAs, like their they're Southern Tier IPA, the 2X IPA, um, unearthly beers like that, just so good. Over the past three or four years, they're, they're just, I don't know, they're just not hitting the same way. And a lot of times you look on like the label and you'll see brewed with natural flavors, made with milk sugar. You see that in a lot of their beers. In fact, I picked up their newest Imperial Ale to review as a shelfie beer uh, for April uh, called Orange Twist. It's supposed to be like an orange creamsicle Imperial Ale at 8.6. And of course, it says right on there, Ale brewed with natural flavors, made with milk sugar. Um, I'm hoping it's good, but like deep down, I don't think it's going to be for me probably. It's a, it's a shame. Southern Tier used to be one of the best breweries in at least the West New York area, but maybe New York State going back into the early two, 2010s, like from like 2010 to like 2014. Man, it's just, it's a shame. The Citra Fog's not bad. And for like a value hazy, it's fine. But like, nah, nah. Yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I don't, let's just move on. I'm disappointed. Um, Schilling, they make awesome beer out of Rhode, uh, Littleton, Rhode Island. Fant or Littleton. New Hampshire, New Hampshire, right? Not Rhode Island, New Hampshire. Um, they're Glimmin. It was a smoked Hellas lager, and I've been getting into smoked beers a little bit more. So uh, I gave this a, a four out of five, which for somebody who likes smoked beers, that's like a four and a half out of five. Like, I, again, I'm just starting to get into them. So it was really good. Not as good as some of the uh, top tier Schlenkerla uh, beers out of Bamberg, Germany, uh, the OGs. But for an American brewed smoked beer, like, I can get down with it. I can totally get down with it. Uh, next, we have a, another craft beer classic, but this is a craft beer like hyped classic. It's from Maine uh, Beer Company, and it is their Lunch. So Lunch was one of those hyped, uh, I guess you would call it like, it's not it's not really a New England IPA. Uh, it's not even like a really a hazy IPA. It's just like one of those old school, like, like in almost like Vermont IPA, even though they're in Maine. Um, First time I had it, I was a little bit underwhelmed. And then the second time I had it, the bottle was nine days old and kind of blew me away. And I understood what people said when they're like, this is an awesome IPA. Now, this bottle I specifically reviewed, I was getting a little bit of a tea note, like almost like an orange marmalade tea note. And typically that means the bottle is old uh, in my experience. Like I've had a lot of aged IPAs that were like six months old that gave me that exact note. That bottle was under a month old. So I don't know what happened, if it got a little bit oxidized or whatever. It was still good. It's just that tea note kind of... Didn't do it for me, so to speak. Um, so I gave it, I think, what I gave it, like a 4.2 or something like that. Uh, yeah, I gave it a 4.2. Typically, this beer is in like the 4 or 5 range, but that bottle was a little bit different, maybe a little bit off, but still an iconic beer. The problem, shout out to Chaz, haven't looked at the comments yet, so I wonder if he mentioned it. I don't know if Chaz ever had lunch, but the, the price point on a lot of these main beer company beers, really expensive. I paid $7.99 for that bottle. 
And typically you're talking six to seven bucks for a, I think it's a 16.9 fluid ounce bottle. In this day and age, that's expensive. It is like seven, eight bucks for a bottle is ridiculous. Um, those should be in like the $5 range, maybe six at the most. So a little bit wonky price point, something I wouldn't drink regularly, even if that was a fine bottle. But uh, yeah, so it's still enjoyable to drink. It's just, is a little bit off. Next, <laughs> we have a beer uh, that I'm sure a lot of you've had before, Red Stripe, the Jamaican style lager. Uh, I had never, it's funny, in the review, I kind of am shocked at how light the beer is because I've never poured the beer into a glass before. Like I've always drank it out of the bottle. And I'll tell you what, if you're looking for like a crushable macro beer, Red Stripe's not bad. I gave it like a 3.6. It's fine for what it is. I think it's pretty good. And the price point's a little bit cheaper than uh, the imported macros you see. I, I, pay, I think it was like $8.99 a six pack, which is a bit cheaper than you see. With I mean, you just had uh, just had Chaz talk about uh, Longboard uh, Island Lager being $10.99 a six pack. And this beer is infinitely better than, than Longboard Island Lager to my palate personally. You might disagree, but like that's just for me. So I would always pick something like this over that. No questions. Um, and it's even better when you're drinking on like vacation or like, you know, by, by a, you know, at the beach, uh, by the ocean or by a, a lake of water, poolside, whatever, right? It's definitely, definitely a beer made for that. Next, we have from Fatheads, we have their Crumbleberry. So this is a variant of their Bumbleberry, which is a honey blueberry ale. This added uh, cinnamon and vanilla. And honestly, Pretty solid, gave it a 3.85, but I, I don't know. It's, it wasn't much different than Bumbleberry. Like the cinnamon vanilla, very minute characteristics. They just kind of were there, uh, but not anything special. Um, I like their Stumbleberry quite a bit more, which is the imperialized version of Bumbleberry. So if you're going to pick up any of the Fatheads Bumbleberry, do the Stumbleberry. Um, it's big ABV. I think it's like 9%, and I think the fruit character is way more impactful. And then we have another Western York Wednesday, a Honey Smuggler Lager from Three Heads. is just a, um, a lager brewed with a touch of honey. And honestly, I gave it a 4.05 out of 5. One of the better uh, beers that I've had with honey lately. Um, it's just it, very easy to crush. You get a little bit of the, the honey in there, exactly what they say it, say it is. And I haven't reviewed many Three Heads beers on the channel. And this year, I'm doing a little bit better of a job kind of being more diverse in the beer, the breweries that I kind of showcase on Western Europe Wednesday. So um, Three Heads is one of those breweries that I think before this, I reviewed one beer from them on the channel. So I picked that one up and I was not disappointed whatsoever. Uh, next, we have uh, Vanessa Kitty says hi, and she says a cup of coffee plus a Dragon's Milk Stout Chaser. That sounds like a good time. It sounds like maybe even too good of a time. What if you pour some of the Milk Stout we could pour some of the dragon's milk stout into the cup, into the coffee. What happens then? Mm. Plum Noir. That was one of the few that I, I didn't try. I think I mentioned that to you before, Chaz. He, that's like one of his favorites. But they did so many cool Blackwater Series beers that they have not brought back. And the ones they brought back, they've kind of, I don't say ruined, but they changed them a lot. Josh says, I see main beer is doing a breakfast, a double IPA. I did see that. I did see that. Uh, I did see that, Josh. You know, they have lunch, they have dinner, they have second dinner. I guess they're going to go with a breakfast IP. He says $7.49 for those bottles around here. Yeah, that's still just too pricey. You know, if you think about it, like if those bottles were in four packs, right, they would be, I mean, you get 0.9 fluid ounce more. So let's just like cut that 49 cents out and say seven bucks a bottle. You're talking about $28 four pack for a 7% beer. Fuck that. Like, fuck that. Like, listen, I like main beer company stuff, but fuck that. That's ridiculous. That should not be a thing. Uh, but nobody does the math like that. They just go, oh, yeah, that's not bad for seven bucks or whatever. Yes, it is. Because <laughs> a 16 fluid ounce can is literally 0.9 fluid ounces less. And if you would have saw, if you see a seven or eight buck can, you would you would be like, no way. Not for a 7% you know, beer. No, it's not. It's not happening. Um, he says, be fun to do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, I'd probably be face down in the dirt somewhere, Josh. And then Chad says Fathead's not sold around here. Yeah, I don't. Fathead's distribution is weird. I mean, they closed down their brew pub they had out in, uh, I think it was Portland, Oregon, a uh, couple years back. They have a bunch of like different brew pubs. They have one in Pittsburgh. Uh, they have the Cleveland one. They have a couple different Cleveland ones. Um, and then they had the Oregon one. And, you know, I don't know. They used to be more hyped back in like the mid 2010s. I remember people around here used to lose their shit over Headhunter. Like if they went down to Cleveland, they would bring cases of Headhunter back. It was like the the beer to get. And I still think Headhunter is a fantastic beer, but it's funny how non-hyped and just basically just shelfy. It reminds me of like when Zombie does for a Scott Distro. It's kind of insane. All right. So we'll continue on here. The next uh, row of beer. Uh, so a... Uh, 
a good friend of mine and fellow YouTuber Joe Senegali, which I'm sure a lot of you follow his channel because he's way bigger than I am and, and better at what he does. But if you go back down here, um, last month he sent me a awesome surprise beer mail. He literally surprised the shit out of me because I had no idea he was sending me a beer mail. And he did with all West Coast goodies from some you know breweries like Green Sheik, uh, Green Sheik uh, Shred, um, Highland Park, and, and a couple others. And he really properly introduced me to Shred Beer Company. Like they're relatively new. I think they opened up last summer and he sent me five different offerings from them. So this was the first one or the second one I had. The pizza cake was the first. No, pizza cake was green cheek. No, this is the first one that I had. And it's basically a West Coast IPA. It's called Indo Outdo. Uh, it's a collaboration with Berryessa Brewing and it was pretty damn good. It wasn't mind blowing as far as like a West Coast IPA goes. I gave it a 4.2, which means it's a fucking really good beer, but it didn't like blow my mind. But at the same time, I was like, yeah, I could drink this all the time. It was a really just tasty beverage. Um, so that was like a good first impression from Shred. And it, it had that like new school West Coast IPA kind of feel to it, which I know some people don't enjoy. I personally do. The new school West Coast IPAs uh, just have more, I feel like more fruit character. Some of them don't have the bitterness that an old school West Coast IPA has, which is a bummer. But if they have a firm bitterness with that new school fruit character, like I'm all over it. So, and a lot of the Shred beers do. Uh, the next beer I reviewed, you know, uh, I'll tell you what. When it comes to non-alcoholic beers, I know a lot of you don't watch the, the content. And, and I understand. Like, a lot of you don't care about non-alcoholic beers, and I can't blame you. For me, since I typically drink a beer a day, right, um, sometimes I mix them in. And, and I like to know which ones are worth my time. So when I was picking up beer, uh, this had to be maybe a month ago, I saw that uh, Brasserie de Chouf had a non-alcoholic version of a Belgian beer. And I was just like, okay, I'm going to grab this. It was, it's called, here in the U.S., it's called N.A. Chouf. But I think it's also referred to as Shoof 0.4 because it has 0.4 uh, percentage uh, as far as the alcohol ABV goes. Um, so I picked it up, and I'm going to be straight on honest with you. It is, and I never thought this would be the case, but this beer right here is the worst non-alcoholic beer I've had so far. Now, if you can see, it's only my 17th non-alcoholic beer review. I've had about 20 in total. And this, from Brasserie to Shoof, was the worst non-alcoholic beer I had. You got to be honest. I love uh, you know the Shoof beers. I really do. Uh, the vast majority of them are really delicious outside of Ublan Schuf, which is a Belgian IPA, just not my jam. That beer is just like, that didn't taste like, it just didn't taste good. And it didn't taste anything like a Belgian beer. So really disappointed in that one. Um, I don't know if I got a bad uh, bottle of it or it's just, that's how it's supposed to taste, but nah, 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 no. So we moved on the next day to uh, Sam Adams Cold Snap. And uh <laughs> I have never had this one ever before this review. And I, a lot of people are shocked. Like, what do you mean? You had to have it at some point, right? And I was like, no. I mean, I buy a lot of different, um, you know, seasonal mix packs from them, but I've never had cold snap. So I tried it out. And I think, I want to think, I, I, I'm not looking at the the um, actual uh, comments right now, but I know Chaz hates this beer. And he says it's just, he's, he, he thinks it's horrible. I actually enjoy it. I gave it a 375. I thought it was solid. I thought it was very Belgian Vit beer esque. It had a little bit more of that like citrusy uh, character uh, that you sometimes get with the uh, the Vit beers. I enjoyed it. Um, again, beer is subjective. Uh, Chas can hate the beer. I can enjoy the beer. Other people can maybe just think the beer is amazing. Some people might think, you know, it's just okay. For me, I thought it was fine for Sam Adams product. Would I ever go back to it? Probably not, just because. You know, there's so many beers out there. I probably would never go back to it. But I put it this way. If I never reviewed the beer, would I have been missing out on something? No, I don't think I would personally be missing out on something. But am I, do I regret reviewing the beer? No, I don't. Because I think it's a solid, solid beer. Um, but it's one of those things where uh, it was fun to review. But now that I reviewed it, probably never go back to it. Next, after that, I had a, uh, not a great experience here with um, Kettlehead. Uh, so Kettlehead, I've reviewed a couple beers on the channel before I've had other beers, you know, off camera. This was their dreams on dreams on dreams, which is a triple, uh, hazy triple IPA. And I thought it was going to be pretty tasty. They make really good beer. My can had some oxidation to it. It, it had like that confectionery sweetness. You sometimes get cardboard s finish. Otherwise it was amazing. Like the other characters were fantastic. The body and mouthfeel were nice. But that oxidation took it from like a potential 4.5 out of 5 to like a 375. Um, I probably should have went even lower. I probably should have dropped it like to a 3.5 or 3.25. Uh, I finished the can. No, no, I take it back. I drank the vast majority. I think I maybe spilled out like the last couple ounces of it. I can't remember. I, I definitely poured out a little bit at the end 
because it was just like, yeah, why am I drinking? Why am I wasting the calories? Triple IPA is probably like five, 600 calories. just not worth it, right? Uh, very disappointed. And one of the few oxidized beers I've had on my channel, I've reviewed over 2,000 beers and I probably have three or four that have been oxidized. And that was one of them. I got to review something else from Kettlehead because that's not a true indication of the stuff that they brew because they make good beer. It's just, it goes to show you that you could be the best brewer in the world and sometimes shit happens. Um, and in this case, it, it happened to Mike Hand. So definitely a bummer. Uh, what do we got? Uh, just, we have, oh, Poppy. Fuck you, Poppy. Poppy, I'm going to go eat all the Tully's fingers tomorrow just to spite you. He says, you're the worst NA beer I've ever had. I'm not even sure what that means, but uh, I'm here for you. Um, Poppy, you come up here. I'm, I'll be the worst NA beer you ever had. We'll go We'll go to Tully's. We'll review the Tully's uh, tenders. We'll review the honey mustard, and we'll do it like Lady in the Tramp. What's up now? Huh? What's up now? That's right. One end of the tender for you, one end of the tender for me. It's going to be delicious. Uh, Green Sombrero says, let's go Buffalo. What's up, buddy? Uh, I'm probably this spring going to try to make it out to uh, Aurora Brew Works. I know I've been talking about it, but this spring, nicer weather. If I do, I will contact you and let you know. We'll meet up for a beer or two. If I have uh, a little better equipment as far as cameras and microphones and stuff go, I might shoot some uh, reviews uh, at Aurora and maybe even like go over to Barbell and show some good wings off. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I've been planning on it. Hopefully maybe in like May, June-ish. Uh, is is what I'm going to try to do that. Chaz says, NA beers are always missing something. You can tell they are NA. I, I, I would agree with that. I feel like I feel like there's only been a couple NA beers where I'm like, okay, this I, this is passable as far as like a true beer. Um, and at the end of the day, most of them have like a weird kind of funky, funky feeling to them. Uh, I think Sammy Adams' Just the Haze was like the closest I had to like a beer that was like, okay, this isn't. A couple Untitled Arts too weren't too bad. Uh <laughs> Bobby says, no, save some for me. You know, the funny thing is, is you've done like 6 billion different chicken tender reviews and you still haven't made it back up the Rochester review. What you said was your favorite. You know what's going to happen though, Poppy? 100% what's going to happen. You're going to come back up here. You're going to review Tolly's tenders and you're just going to be like, yeah, there's probably like 30 places down south that I tried that are better than them. I just, you know, it, it's, it's, I love, listen, I love Tolly tenders, but like some of the ones you have reviewed and love like look way better than Tully's like way better like seriously so you know we'll see what happens um he says please do my friend will be great to beat you at a, a bw and barbell yeah i mean that that's that that would be the plan um you know probably uh probably get a uh a dd <laughs> i have to get a dd drop me off let me go over to abw you know drink some beer go over barbells get a get an order of wings and, and have a great time um at least that sounds a great like great time in my mind he says, debating what my limits are. Lady and the tram tallies with another dude might be too far. <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying, you know, it's for, Poppy, it's for the content, buddy. It's for the content. It has nothing to do with limits here. Well, maybe it does a little bit, but now we could just, you know, review them together. Like, you know, we'll, we'll get the FLX boys. We'll do a group review of uh, grossness and, uh, you know, we'll see. He said, okay. So he said, okay. So, you know, it'll get you an extra like negative 3,000 subscribers. I, I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of people that would be like, what? No, un 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 unsubbed. We're not going to sit here for this. Um, and it, it'll be even worse when the Tully's tenders are not that good. So not only would you be doing Lady and the Tramp, but then the tenders are terrible. Like, yeah, not, not ideal. All right. So the next row, um, 13 days ago. So now we're getting down to the last last couple rows here, last couple days, you know, last week, two weeks of the um, month. Uh, for St. Patty's Day, I did Smittix. So Smittix is a beer I'm sure many of you out there have had before. And I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this. The last time I had it was, you know, years back. And I gave it a 4.05 out of 5. For an Irish red, like, it's pretty fucking good. Like, I need to, I guess, seek out more Irish reds because I love the malt character to it. It was very drinkable. And I drank the rest of that can in, like, five minutes off camera. It was just, like, it went down like water. It was it was really good. Um, you know, I'm, I'm probably preaching to the choir of a lot of folks out there that enjoy Smittix. But, like, yeah, it kind of surprised me. And I, I think I'd rather have Smittix over Guinness, believe it or not. Like, if I if I had a choice between the two, I think I'd take Smittix over Guinness. Um, maybe not go, uh, uh, Guinness for an extra stout. I would definitely not. But, like, regular Guinness draft, yeah, I would take Smittix over that all day long. Sons, next. A beer I bought strictly, strictly for the label. Now, you can see me holding it up here. I don't know how big it's going to show off on camera here. But uh, it's basically, I'm a huge wrestling nerd, have been my entire life. The NWO, the New World Order, Hulk Hogan, even if you're a non-wrestling fan, you might know what happened back in the 90s. But Hulk Hogan, for the first time, went from Hulkamania and being the, you know, the good guy, the hero, 
to a bad guy, a heel, a bad, you know, a very bad guy. And he led the New World Order. That label is the exact logo of the New World Order, but it's Hayes World Order. It was, it's like, I, I keeping that can, putting it behind me on the pretentious wall of bottles and cans, even if the beer was trash, I would have. Luckily, it wasn't trash. I gave it a 4.1. It was a nice, you know, double dry hopped hazy IPA. But I would be lying if I told you that the beer was better than label because the beer could have been like a world class hazy and it still wouldn't be better than the fucking label. So that's where, you know, it ends for me. So, you know, that's just a great, great, great label. When you see a beer with a great label, you got to buy it. Next from Bell's, Big Hearted IPA. So this is like their imperialized version of Two Hearted. And I still haven't heard or nobody commented and said like, What's the difference between Big Hearted and Double Two Hearted as far as like ingredients go? Now, Double Two Hearted is bigger in ABV, but you got Two Hearted, you got Double Two Hearted. Where does Big Hearted fill in? Because it's nine and a half percent. It's a paralyzed version of Two Hearted, technically. I don't know where it's supposed to, to fit in the equation as far as the series goes, but uh, it was a good beer. I gave it a 4.05 out of a five, and it reminded me of old school you know, American double IPAs. It had that, you know, you could taste the malt a little bit. It had that old school hop character, you know, resinous pine, floral, um, a lot of citrus character. Honestly, one of the better shelfy double IPAs or imperialized IPAs I've had uh, probably in the last six months. So uh, I was glad I picked that one up. Next, the best beer I had the, uh, in March, the best beer maybe I've had this year, uh, for West York Wednesday, the uh, Grow Brewing Company, uh, they are a nomadic brewery that is headquartered in Geneva, New York, but they are moving to, um, uh, what is it, New Hartford? New Hartford, New York, which is uh, just outside of Utica. They finally are going to open up their own tap room. So you can see by the thumbnail over here, I'm just like staring at the, at the, at the beer because it blew my mind. Um, this was a bourbon barrel aged barley wine. They don't say English or American, but definitely lean to the English side. And, uh, it was everything I wanted in a bourbon barrel aged barley wine, like literally everything from body, mouthfeel, taste, aroma, look, drinkability, hiding the booze, just fucking the best beer I've had from them, but also one of the best beers I've had probably in the last year. It blew my mind. I can't believe a local nomadic brewery actually is the one that brewed this. They brewed this beer like they don't even have their own facility and they brewed this beer. It was amazing. Like it was I, I, I need to go buy more bottles, but. I think there's only a couple left at a couple of the beer stores. I know Paul over at Brew News wanted one. I probably should buy another one to sell her. Uh, if you're in the Western New York area and you haven't picked up that beer, you need to do so, especially if you like the style. Like, you're missing out. It's a fucking top-tier, amazing uh, barley wine. It's just so good. The the, the body was almost uh, media noche-like, where it was so thick and, like, velvety, but also, like, almost like a fruit smoothie sour ale, like, in terms of the consistency. Like, kind of amazing, honestly. Um, I can't stop talking about that beer. People are like, oh, what's, what's the best beer you've had recently? That, and I'll probably be saying that for many, many months. Uh, next, we have um, we have Cameron. Cameron says, saw you were live. Just want to pop and say, hey, we'll check the Doppelbach review later. Thanks, Cameron. Cameron just sent me a uh, beer bell, which I'll be posting later. Uh, well, I was going to say later this week. It's Saturday, so not later this week. Next week, like next Thursday, Friday, I'll be posting it. Sent me some cool beers from the Midwest, uh, you know, Wisconsin, uh, Illinois, and whatnot. So I can't wait to uh, tear into those. So appreciate you stopping by, Cameron. Poppy says, "What? wait, what the fuck is big hearted? Not me. Mine is fucked fucked up hearted like that's me uh it's just a bigger version of two hearted uh, poppy which um they have a whole hearted series so they do a cold ipa it's called cold hearted they do a black ipa it's called black hearted you see the theme they're so clever they're so clever uh green Sparrow says i enjoyed the bells products yeah i think they're good for shelfies like you know they're cheaper you can find them everywhere it's not bad and adam says good evening brother what's up adam adam i was telling uh the boys that we could do the schlenkerla uh thing tonight but you got sammy live Josh was, uh, Josh uh, was around. Craig was around. I am game, but uh, I don't know where Peter is, and I don't know who else would be joining us. Is Harry? I have no idea. I have no idea what the fuck's going on. Um, he said, uh, Pat, Poppy says, oh, yeah, I had the double one way back. Uh, big was news to me. That's the thing. Like, it's very confusing because you have the iconic two hearted. Then they released the double two hearted a couple years back for sure, and, and it was really good. I enjoyed it. But then big hearted, where the fuck does that? Like, I can't tell the difference. Like, I don't. I don't know. Like, it doesn't specify. It's just like, oh, it's a bigger version of Two Hearted. Well, wasn't that what fucking Double? Double Two Hearted was? Like, I don't know. I don't know what Bells is doing, but uh, whatever. Like, it confused the shit out of me, and I I don't know. Like, I have no idea. Rod says, cheers, buddy. Congrats on the anniversary, brother. Uh -huh. Listen, Rod, you know, 
I can I pale in comparison to you being, you know, a celebrity now with that uh, feature on the on the and the uh, on the Baltimore. Um, forget the what was the name of the uh, the website you were featured on, but you were featured. The newspaper you were featured. Can't reach that level. No, but thanks, thanks, Rada. You you celebrated your anniversary recently. I'm celebrating mine. Cheers all around, buddy. I thank you, good sir. All right, so we'll go back to the last couple. We got three more rows, and then we're going to start talking about beer bucket list. So another shred beer sent to me by Joe, Mosaic Street Hazy IPA. Um, a damn solid Hazy IPA, if we're being honest. Um, oh, by the way, I gave that Dormancy, the grow beer, I gave that a five out of five. Like, I thought it was... I, I didn't mention it just because it says one of the best beer. It has a perfect score. One of the few I've, I've given a couple perfect scores this year, and that was a perfect score. This Mosaic Street was nice. It was an all Mosaic Hazy IPA. I gave it a 4.25. I actually liked it better than the West Coast IPA, surprisingly. Um, it was that is like the most drinkable and like crushable hazy I've had in a while, 7%. Like very sessionable. You can sit down with two or three cans, you know, you'd feel good after them, but like they're not heavy. It's not too much, not too juicy, too fruity, like good balance, really good beer. Um, I'm a gang. Now, a lot of you who are in New York or in like the, like in the East coast, we'll say, we'll just say generically East coast, maybe Northeast. You've probably had I'm a gang in a lot of their core lineup. Well, I have not revisited Abiel in quite a while. It's a Belgian style, uh, double AKA double. And, um, man, I don't know what it was about that, that bottle specifically, but it kind of, I'll say blew me away, but it kind of surprised me in a, in the best way possible. I gave it a 4.3. It was everything I kind of wanted in the style. Super drinkable, despite the ABV being, you know, I think it was, I think it, that beer is like around 8%, maybe a little bit higher. Um, that's just a really good beer. And, you know, sometimes doing beer reviews, as I do on my channel, and looking for the latest and greatest and all the hype shit, you forget about these classic year-round, you know, flagship beers that breweries have. And that's the reason why I do the shelfy beers every month. Uh, because it forces me to, to revisit a lot of these beers, but also try out new beers from some of the, uh, you know, shelfy breweries that, you know, for lack of a better word, like um, Green Sombrero just mentioned, you know, Bell's, he likes Bell's products. Bell's is a shelfy brewery. Like you can find them in you know, grocery stores quite easily. They're cheaper, but that doesn't mean they make bad beer. This beer I'm drinking right here from Boulevard, right? This Dark Crater. Boulevard is a shelfy brewery at this point, right? But they're a good shelfy brewery. They are. And like a beer like this, and delicious. So, you know, Ama Gang makes really good, you know, Belgian style beers, and that surprised me. Gave it a 4.3, really good. Next was a collaboration between Dancing Gnome and Other Half. Uh, this was rebrewed by Dancing Gnome to celebrate Other Half's uh, 10th anniversary. So, again, you have Rod with his anniversary, mine with mine, and now Dancing Gnome celebrating Other Half's anniversary. Uh, this was just like a, a big hazy double IPA. I gave it a 3.9. It was kind of disappointing, if I'm being honest with you. Uh, the reason why I was disappointing, Enigma Hops. When people ask me, Joe, what's your favorite hops? I don't give a shit about talking about my favorite hops. Let me tell you what. My least favorite hop, and it's not even close at this point, is Enigma. There is no hop that rivals Enigma and will ever rival. And I can't say, it. you know, there's probably going to be a hop or two that gets breeded at some point that is worse than Enigma. But I always get, like, trash vibes from Enigma. Like, stinky, rotten fruit. And so I've had a couple beers with it in there that, like, I can tolerate it and it's fine. This was one of those beers where it would have been awesome if the Enigma didn't ruin the finish. Like it, like it was great. And then like on the, on the finish, it was just like, yeah, no, I get this nice hint of like a fucking rotten banana in my fruit or in my uh, trash, trash can, or like, you know, a rotten fucking peach or something. Right. Like it was just disgusting and I hate the fucking hop, but I'm still going to try beers with the hop in it because I am not a smart person. So just keep that in mind going forward, that when you see me reviewing a beer with Enigma, you're going to go, well, I thought you hate it. Yeah, but I'm also a dumbass. So, you know, it equals out at the end. And then for this row, six days ago, I reviewed from Jackie O's, their Bourbon Barrel Black Maple. So this would have been better if it was like the last beer I reviewed for March because we could have segued right into the bucket beer list. This was a beer that's on my beer bucket list. If I had one when I did this, I do now have one. It's no longer on it because I reviewed it. Are you confused? I'm confused. So this is just a um, big Imperial Porter brewed with maple syrup, Asian bourbon barrels. And uh, while not amazing, it was still really good. I gave it 4.35. Uh, I actually got the maple syrup in there, which was surprising because they brew with maple syrup. And then it's Asian bourbon barrels for like a year. So you think maybe the maple would fade. 
It really didn't. It was very prominent. It just, the beer as a whole wasn't as robust and delicious as a lot of Jackie O beers. Like a lot of Jackie O beers are like top notch. This was just really, really, really tasty. Just not like world-class amazing. So, you know, it is what it is. Go back to the comments and we have cheers uh, from uh, Tater Dom. Cheers. Cheers, Tater Dom. He, he actually was the first guy to comment on the review. I did this before that and now he's back. And then Poppy says, oh, damn, six years. Congrats, man. I'm seeking on the four. Yes, you are. It's Poppy, you got to do something crazy for your fourth. I don't know. You know, maybe maybe temp, <laughs> temp fate and eat some, eat some nuts that you can't have. You know, just see. Have the EpiPen ready. You know, I'm just kidding. Uh, don't, don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> please, please. The, the views aren't worth it. Uh, Rod says, LOL, still in your shadow, but Voyage Baltimore. You're in my shadow? I don't, I don't. Are you saying I'm fat, Rod? I am. Thank you. Thank you for pointing out, Rod. Thanks. <laughs> Tater Dom says, hey there, Rod J. He says, what's up, Tater uh, Tater Dom. And then Rick says, late to the party here. Cheers. Had no idea this was going on. Yeah, because fuck YouTube, Rick. YouTube. No way to fucking, you know, there's so many people are like, oh, could you send me an email or you can text me or whatever because YouTube, like you can hit that fucking stupid bell and the bell's just like, nah, man. Nah, fuck your bell. We're not notifying you of anything. There are like, now I'm not a big, I'm not, I was going to, I was going to literally call myself a content creator and then I was going to just punch myself in the face for saying that. But as somebody who is on YouTube and, and, you know, posts videos and, and reviews beers, I'm smaller, right? Like I have a small channel, 3,500 subs is, you know, a drop in the bucket to a lot of the, the big actual content creators. Um, but there, there's been a lot of people that I've seen like saying, yeah, man, sometimes these bigger, you know, let's say they have 100,000 subs. Some people don't even get their actual like videos in their feed and they're subscribed. They have the bell hit and all that stuff. So for like a little person like me who could like, I have, I have eight people watching and I appreciate everybody who's watching, right? But if if my content isn't being, people aren't being notified of like when I'm going live at all. Like I, I'm surprised I have any people watching. Like it's, you have to be sitting there looking at your fucking feed to, oh, this guy's live. Okay. Like it's insane. Like, I don't know. I, whatever. It's just rants. I don't, I, I like to rant though. It says, Tater Dom says, same LOL at Rick Kramer. Yeah, this is just bullshit. Fucking YouTube. Anyway, uh, Poppy says, I found a review of Reese's Cup on my phone that I filmed practically blackout drunk Thursday. Now, wait, you found it on Thursday or did you review it on Thursday when you're blackout drunk? Because um, if you should at least you should at least upload that and make it private and like send it to like the FLX boys and myself or something. I'd love to see you fucking going nuts. You know what I mean? Like that'd be cool. I, I, I would assume that you'd like the Reese's Cup. Maybe drunk you didn't. He says, so there's that. And then, uh, and then Rick says, it's just laughing. Yeah. And then Poppy says, you're absolutely a content creator. If you're creating content. Yeah. In, in the pure, like, listen, Poppy, that, you know, that is correct. Like as far as if you break it down that way, sure. But like my content is me being lazy as possible, posting a fucking a review of a beer and just like uploading it bare bones. I don't do any editing. I don't have an intro. I don't have any of that shit. So like, I just look at me as being super lazy uh, fucking YouTuber. So I, I don't like calling myself a content creator because I'm not a good one. Anyway, East Coast LQ reviews. Tanner says, cheers, you filthy animal. Happy Easter, brother. What up, Tanner? Um, I've been watching a little bit of you making your first beer ever. It's been interesting. Uh, yeah, it's been interesting. Can't wait to see what uh, you think about it. Are you, did, have you, now I, again, because it's YouTube and all the people I'm subscribed to, who knows if I've seen it. Have you tried out the beer? Or are you still, uh, or is it still fermenting? Because I, I have not seen like the last maybe like three or four days of any videos from you, Tanner. So he said, reviewed it Thursday. <laughs> Left my ass off. I'm afraid to watch. This was before I puked in the girl's sink. You should have filmed that. You should have filmed that. Although you would have had to fucking probably somehow. Uh, w w the whole thing, maybe like five, six years ago, like reckless eating and other other um, content creators. They uh, they had to start cutting out the vomiting because like they would make no money it would be demonetized. So I guess that's probably still a thing. I wouldn't know. I don't vomit on camera, so who knows? Uh, Tater Dom says, "Yo, cheers, Tanner," saying hi to him. And then uh, Poppy says, "Now that would have been some content creation right there. That would have been the best type of content creation, like hands down the best." So yeah, you need you need to at least post that as a short or something. You just like. Whatever the Reese's fucking, your reaction to the Reese's cup as your blackout drunk, that needs to be at the very least a short. If it's a longer video, that's even fucking better. All right, so the last two um, rows here. So I did a side-by-side, -side, and as you fucking, you probably can't see it because it's probably smaller, but uh, this was a 24-minute and 9-second side-by-side of two beers from Green Cheek 
their pet the tiger and don't pet the tiger 24 uh, release. Um, you might be saying, why is it 24 minutes long? Have you watched my channel? Have you seen what, have you watched this live stream? Like this, I talk way too much about things that don't matter. So that review was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of people asked me if I had any beer before I did those that, that side by side. I did not. But I watched that back and I laughed my ass off at like three or four different things I said. I was unhinged in that review to the point where like, I don't know what the hell I was saying. And it did seem like I was hammered or like on something. Like, I don't know. Like I was just, maybe I was so like joyful and happy and excited because I was reviewing two beers from Green Cheek and they both sounded delicious. But my God, was it a fucking, it was the best and worst review at the same time. It was fantastic. Um, but yeah, so both beers were delicious. I gave pet the tiger a four, seven, don't pet the tiger a four, six. If you like West coast style, new school, West coast style IPAs, they are fantastic. I preferred the pet the tiger. It was 7.2%. Don't pet tiger was 10%, 10.3. I think I preferred the lower ABV one way more crushable. And I just like the profile because it tasted like pina colada and who, I mean, I love pina colada. Sign me up for pineapple and coconut all fucking day long. And, uh, yeah, those are two fantastic beers, but. Holy shit, a 24-minute review? Here's, here's, here's a spoiler. My anniversary beer review on Monday I'm posting, another side-by-side -side comparison, 29 minutes and something seconds long, so almost 30 minutes. So I just clearly don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I, you know, The attention span of most people nowadays is like nothing, which is why you have TikTok and YouTube shorts popping off because people want to watch fucking 33-second reviews or whatever with 73 jump, uh, jump cuts. Not here. Not here. There's no jump cuts. And all the reviews are at least 10 minutes long. Because fuck your attention span. Fuck my attention span. Anyway, <laughs> Von Trapp was next. It was their Schwartz, their black lager German style Schwartz beer. And uh, just, it's Von Trapp. It's really good. 4.35 out of 5. Uh, if you've had a German Schwartz beer or a German style Schwartz beer or a black lager, they're all the same uh, in terms of style. This is one of the better American brewed ones that I've had, especially from a company where like, I think six packs of that's like $12.99. Yeah. Yes, please. Next, we have a uh, beer mail, small but impactful beer mail, courtesy of Gregory. He sent me two Funky Buddha beers, an Angry Share beer, and then Lagunitas Willitized. Uh, he's from Florida, so three of the beers from Florida. The two beers he sent from Funky Buddha, their Maple Bacon Coffee Porter and their Last Snow, which is a, is it a coconut chocolate or coconut coffee? I forget. It has coconut in it, so I just kind of black out after that. I've had both those beers before, but I had them at bottle shares, so I get to review an actual like full can of them. And then the Angry Chair beer is an Imperial German Chocolate Cupcake Stout. And again, when somebody says that, like my valve twitches, like it's a little bit of flutter. I'm like, oh, am I going down for the count? No, I'm just really excited because it's German chocolate. Cupcake Stout, Imperialized. So can't wait to get into those beers. The Lagunitas, now I didn't notice this when I was doing the unboxing, and I don't know if I'm going to drink the Lagunitas and review it. Why? After I unboxed it, um, a couple days later, I'm talking to Gregory, and I wanted to go look at the bottled on date to see how old the, the Willitized was. So I'm looking at the bottle, and I'm like, oh, here you know, here's the bottle of Willitized, blah, 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 whatever's going on. There's a fucking crack in the bottle, and it wasn't the seam of the bottle. Like, this has a seam right here, right? You're not going to see it on my shitty camera, but there's a seam. There was a crack down the bottle. Now, it didn't look like it protruded through the other side, but as somebody who is on blood thinners, okay, somebody who's on some heavy-duty blood thinners, let me just say that I don't think I should chance drinking that bottle knowing what could potentially happen if I was to consume some very fine uh, glass in my beer. So I was looking forward to doing Willitize. I didn't pick it up this year. I saw it in the beer mail. I was like, all right, this is an excuse to review it. And now I see a fucking crack in my bottle, and I'm like, do I chance it? I don't think I chance it. I don't think I chance it. I don't think there's going to be any in the beer, but I don't think I chance it. So it's a real bummer that I'm not going to be able to drink that. Now, I've been looking for a bottle of Willitize locally. Haven't found one yet. If I do, I will still review it, and I'll give Gregory the credit. It's just, it's a shame that there was a crack in the bottle. It happens. Next, for Western York Wednesday, I did a uh, collaboration between Strange Bird and Big Ditch. It was their Strange Burner blended IPA. So here in the West New York area, Big Ditch's Hay Burner is that classic, you know, hazy slash American IPA that's on tapped everywhere. Everybody, you know, has 
tried uh, Big Dish Hayburner. If you're here in the Western area and you like IPAs, like you've, you've definitely tried it. So they took that beer, they blended it with a uh, sour and wood aged um, Belgian golden ale called a Guten Boom from uh, Strangeburg. Really fun beer. Um, I gave that beer a uh, 4.15 out of 5. It was really, really solid. Uh, Heartburn City, for those of you who have like acid reflux or, uh, you know, you don't like acidic beers or acidic pretty much food and drink in general, it would definitely fuck you up big time. Um, it didn't mess me up too bad, but I could definitely see how somebody would not be happy with that. All right, let's go to the comments and then we will, uh, he said, okay, so, and then we'll, we'll finish it, finish up the, uh, monthly recap. Uh, Tanner says, I bottled it Thursday, tasted a, a little of the last out of the fermenter, super banana and sweet multi flavor. Going to have to save some for our next meetup and you guys can trash it. I'm already mentally preparing to trash it, Tanner. That's the beauty about it. I cannot wait to trash it. That sounds awesome though, right? It's a Hefeweizen, right? So the fact that it has that, that banana flavor is like sign me up means the yeast is, uh, going crazy. And they says, cheers to tear down Poppy eats. Uh, Poppy says, cheers back to him. And then he says, yeah, I'm on the verge of just going all in on the short-term BS. Blah. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't take effort, the short-term stuff, but, um, you know, I feel like making a minute less review where you just jump cut everything or like specifically make it geared towards a less than a minute. I feel like the people that are going to watch your content, Poppy, because the people who watch my content, you have to be, you don't have to be of age, but most people drinking craft beer or beer in general are in the States, typically 21, or if you're, you know, 19, 18, 20, whatever, a lot of people that can watch your content can be teenagers and, 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 and younger people who enjoy like fast food and stuff. So I would, if I was doing what you do, which is basically like food reviews and whatnot, and even like product reviews where you're appealing to everybody and not just a small niche market, I would definitely do short-term content in addition to the long-term and, and really focus on it on, on TikTok and, and on YouTube shorts. But, you know, I don't know what I'm doing because I'm not a content creator. Hey, hang on, I'm a content creator. Just not doing. Uh, Paul says, congratulations on the sixth anniversary and says, what's up, everyone? Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it, man. Um, always love your uh, whenever. I always look forward, Paul, to your channel whenever there's you know a snowstorm coming. It's just, it's fun. I love watching you plow and, and, and do everything in it. It's just, it's a lot of fun. Even though I'm experiencing the same thing, not all the time because I'm about 30 minutes to your north, but uh, it's interesting to watch you. Sometimes you'll have like, a foot or two and i'll be up here in uh niagara county going oh yeah no yeah we got you know an inch on the ground cool it's it's pretty crazy it's pretty crazy uh poppy says internal bleeding is so hot right now should have drank it yeah no i <laughs> let's see you know drink a lagunitas will it with a crack in it and see if i survive that would be the challenge right that'd be a great you know, a lot of people do challenges on youtube let's do the challenge and see if i survive that and then paul says thank you no, no for sure man i enjoy I, like i said i enjoy it um even in the summer, sometimes it's it's like when you're cutting the grass and stuff, it's it's kind of just mellow. It's nice. All right. So the last four beers for this month, and then I have one more coming out tomorrow. I'll just tell you right now, the Easter review tomorrow is a coffee cake imperial barrel-aged pastry beer, and uh, it's from Finback, and it was pretty fucking good. Let's just say that. So uh, spoilers, it's it's a pretty fucking good beer. Why am I drinking a coffee cake beer for you know the, the Sunday uh, Easter Sunday celebration? Because why not? Why not? All right. So I posted these two reviews on the same day. They're from Shred, German style Pilsner, Mad Skills Pills, and they're Hop Suey. Now we talked earlier about that wrestling uh, label being so fantastic. Hop Suey might be the best theme and artwork of a beer I've seen in a long time. So the name of it is Hop Suey, a play on hop, you know, ch chop suey. But then the label actually has like a, a carton of chop suey, but there's, there's hops in it. And it's it just, it's such an awesome label. The beer was fantastic, though. I gave it a 4.75. It is one of my favorite West Coast double IPAs I've had uh, this year, certainly, and probably in the last six months. It was fantastic. And their German-style pills was pretty fucking good as well. Um, I gave that a 4.35. Gave the Hop Suey a 4.75. Just, listen, Shred, I have had four beers. I got one more I got to post from them. They make awesome stuff. They're a smaller brewery in California. But uh, they are definitely up there with like for me like the green cheeks of the world, the the North Parks. Like they're up there. They just don't get the uh, kudos to this point because they've only been open for like eight months, nine months. So uh, once they once they get you know a little bit more time under their belt, I think you'll be hearing them in the same breath as the aforementioned brewery. So just two awesome beers. That hop suey, oh my god, it's so fucking good on Instagram and, and Instagram. Like I don't know what I'm doing on Instagram. I'm terrible. I I, I posted a story. Um, 
of of the you know of the review and i had to put for the song you know chop suey from system of a down because it made too much sense but i just love the artwork uh the beer review i posted yesterday is um uh veshmala their tra uh, trap is trapel so belgian trapel and this is my favorite belgian trapel and i don't even like the style like i'm not a huge fan of the style i've always loved this beer though and this this bottle was like eight I think it was like eight, over eight months old, and I gave it a 4.6. It is my favorite Belgian Trapel. I have not found one as good as it. Um, some people post in the comment section today, like, you should, you know, maybe do like a Trapel series where like each month you like review a Belgian Trapel since you don't really care for the style and see if there's others that you enjoy. And I might do that. I might do that. Uh, Greg, Greg posted that, and then an, an, another person mentioned that as well. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Maybe I will. Maybe I should do that with some styles I don't enjoy, like once a month review something just to see, hey, maybe I actually like the style now. So, Because there's certain styles that I say I hate, like I don't like smoke beers, but I'm, I've had some smoke beers recently that I enjoy. I say I don't like Belgian Chappelle's. I've had some Chappelle's uh, recently that I enjoy, especially this one. So we'll see. But uh, it's an amazing beer. If you like Belgian Chappelle's, you've never had this one, like you got to buy it. Like it's fantastic. And then last but not least, today I posted the collaboration uh, review between Weldworks and other half, their Triple Juicy Diamonds. Big hazy triple IPA, uh, pretty damn good beer. Uh, I gave it a 4.35. It's well works in other half. They make really good beer, and I'm not surprised. So that pretty much does it for uh, this this little uh, monthly recap. More sirens. What the hell's going on? I'm gonna stop the screen here. Look at the comments. Paul said, or, uh, Rod says, "Cheers to Paul." And Green Sabrero says, "I'm a huge fan of Duval from Belgium." Which, yeah. So he, you posted about that, and I still have to. Uh, can review uh, Duval at some point. There's a lot of Belgian beers I still got to review at some point. There's there's too many. Fucking Rod, you got to be shitting me, buddy. He says, when's that o Oberon revisit coming? Uh, last year, Rod. I bought that. I bought the Oberon mixed variety pack that had base Oberon and then the, the mango habanero, the, the, lemon, the citrus one, and then like the cherry one. And... I said in that review the exact same thing I always say about Oberon. It's just fucking it's American Pale Weed Ale, and it's not for me. Uh, the Mango Habanero was the best, but the other two suck. Like, I don't know. I just don't like Oberon. Just, it is what it is. Although I will say, the Eclipse Oberon I reviewed this year, and I thought that was pretty solid. Like, it had more it had more of like a Belgian-y, German kind of wheat beer thing. Like, I got like some banana in there. It was like, it was a bit different. I enjoyed it. Um, and then... The tropical Oberon I enjoyed, but the tropical Oberon kind of tasted like a sour beer. Like it would all it had like passion fruit and guava or whatever in it, and it was really good. But it tasted nothing like Oberon, which is why I enjoyed it. So, yeah. Anyway, so uh, we're at an hour and seven minutes, which cool by me. So now, what we're gonna do? And, and Paul said, uh, "Cheers back to uh, Rod." What we're gonna do? And anybody watching? Chime in, chime in with, with what would be, if you had a bucket list, what beers would be on your bucket list? Like, you know, even like you, Poppy, you know, I know you, you're not into the craft beer as much as say like, you know, the FLX boys and myself, like you're not reviewing it on fucking YouTube and going nuts, but I'm sure you have some beers that you may have wanted to try at some point. Uh, same thing with, you know, anybody else in the uh, comment section if there are any beers that you've always wanted to try and would be on your bucket list, let me know. Post in the comments. I would love right now to see them because I am going to bring up my quickly made. Now, I made this the other night. And, and what I did is I went on to Beer Advocate and I looked at the top 50 beers on Beer Advocate. The reason I went to Beer Advocate, which I don't know, I haven't went to Beer Advocate in a long time, is because those top 50 beers still, you know, I think make sense. A lot of them are old school ones, right? So... To me, it was like, all right, here's the top 50. What have I had? And I still hadn't had quite a few of them. Um, I've probably had maybe like, I want to say like 80 to 100 of them of the top 50. Uh, but there was a lot that I haven't had. And then I looked at those and I was like, all right, I, I really want to try this, this, and this. And then off of the top of the dome piece, how I did it was I broke it down to regions in my mind. So I was like, all right, what beers from like the West Coast haven't I tried? What beers from the South? What beers from the Midwest? What beers from the uh, Northeast and the East Coast? And then I was like, all right, what European beers haven't I had? And so on. I ended up with, I think, 19 different beers. So these, and, and some of them are like macro lagers. They're not just strictly craft beer. They're like macro lagers. So um, I, I'm going to bring it up momentarily. Uh, from un I did untap because it was the easiest way to be like, okay, you know, here we go. We're going we're gonna to do it this way. So 
Anyway, um, let's see here. We got uh, Poppy says, the ones I've always wanted to try from my youth are Pliny the Elder and Younger. Well, one of those is on my bucket list. So, yeah, makes sense. And then Tanner says, good to see you, Joe. Appreciate you, bro. You too, Tanner. Tanner, I was telling the boys earlier, uh, I might hop over to Sammy's if he has room or if it's not crazy or if you guys just want to chat offline or whatever. I'm game tonight for a bit. This will probably be done in about a half an hour. So if you guys want to, uh, you guys want to chat it up, whether it's live or not, um, I'm game for sure. So just let me know. All right. So I'm going to bring up my bucket list and then we're going to read some of the, some of the stuff that the folks are posting here, Green Sobrero and Rod. So let me bring up the bucket list that I have here and we will then. All right. All right. Uh, all right, let me see if this is sharing ground. Okay, so here we go. We got the bucket list up. All right, so these are all the beers on my bucket list. We're going to start from the bottom, but first I'm going to read what you guys have said over here. So Green Sombrero says, I just tried some beers while in Vermont. Hetty Topper and a couple Foley Brothers, Pieces of Eight and Prospect. Nice, Foley Brothers. We used to get their stuff going back like 10 years ago, and then we didn't get as many, um, and now, now we get none. So uh, yeah, Hetty Topper, definitely at the top of a lot of people's bucket lists. Rajay says, Hedy Topper, Hedy Topper, Focal Banger, Pliny the Elder, and Pliny the Younger. Interesting. Yeah, no, those those I feel are like at the top of everybody's list. He said, uh, Rick says, I'd love to try that Utopias from, from Sam Adams, you know, which is like a $250, $300 bottle, depending on where you get it. Fun fact, Rick, if you ever go to Canada and they actually release it, it's about half the price in Canadian. They released it a couple different times. I think it was like one year, it was like 2015, then 2017. And they did like a, where you had to call up the, the LCBO in, in Canada, and specifically in Ontario is the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. And they pretty much kind of regulate like the booze and, and the beers and whatnot. But a bottle of Utopias was like, if you convert it to America, uh, US, USD, it was like $85 a bottle. And then the next time they released it, it was like $110 a bottle. USD. And we here in the States are paying literally three times that. It's insane. I don't understand it. Um, Paul Rice says, I love beer, but I don't know much about IPA. Uh, maybe someone could advise me what to try. I like Budweiser. Thank you. Paul, it's a real tough thing to go from like a macro lager like Budweiser into like IPAs. It's really tough. Um, I think your best bet is to, if you want to drink some kind of like craft beers to like go, go try some like um, Pilsner's like 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 a Czech style German style Pilsner or even like a Hellas Lager, like a German Hellas Lager. It's a good way to tr um, transition from like a macro beer, like a Budweiser or Coors or something like that, into craft beer because you'll get to see the differences, but they're still they have similarities. Where if you just die from a Budweiser into like a super hoppy IPA, damn, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna probably hate it with a passion. Rick says, do these ha have to be beers we've never had? Yes. Yes, these bucket list. So the bucket list, uh, Rick, is basically beers you want to try before you kick the bucket. So it can't be revisited beers. It has to be straight on beers that you'd never had before. He says, damn, good to know. And Green Sabrell says, I would like to get my hands on some Treehouse and Hot Butcher beers in Western New York. Like I said, Green Sabrell, uh, Hot Butcher, Premier Gourmet, Amherst, New York. They get drops like every four to six weeks. Just go in there and there'll be some on the shelf to try. 100%. That, that's that's the one place I know where we can get them here. All right, so the first beers on my bucket list are, okay, listen, listen, they're, they're macros. The first one is from Lone Star Brewing Company, and it's their original. Okay, it's their original. And the original, it's just an American lager. This beer is owned by PBR and contract brewed by Miller. 4.72. 4. 4.72. What? No, I don't want that. I want this. 4.72. Okay, Lone Star. 4.7. The fuck is that? It's too, too exact. 4.72. Okay. Uh, 10 IBUs. And where's Lone Star out of? They're out of uh, San Antonio, Texas. But again, they're owned by uh, PBR. Um, so yeah, I've heard about Lone Star, the beer itself. And again, this is a... For me, look, like recently, I've really wanted to try local slash regional macro beers. Like... Here in West New York, we got Genesee Cream, Cream Ale. We got Genesee Beer. We got uh, Utica Club uh, Pilsner, which is basically just a lager. You go down to like where Josh is last beer uh, in, you know, in the Virginia and Maryland area. You got Natty Bo, Natty Bo, uh, Natty, Nat, uh, National Bohemian. Um, you go out west and you have a couple more that are going to be on this list. 
you have hams throughout like the Midwest and different areas. So I want to try Lone Star at some point. Just what I want to do. Is it a, a good beer? Probably not great, but why not, right? So Lone Star is on the list for sure. Now, if we go back to the list, the next one is Old Style from Paps. So this is one that I know a lot of people in like Chicago area drink. And again, oddly enough, 4.64% alcohol by volume. I don't know what the fuck is up with these regional beers having I, you know, specific uh, ABVs, but another regional beer that I would like to try um, without question. Uh, I know this is like you know, a lot of people drink this in the Midwest and it's just like, yeah, I would love to try that. So th th those two beers, first two beers on the list for sure. Next, uh, Paps Rainier. So Paps owns fucking like all of these basically. Uh, so Rainier is the, the Pacific Northwest beer that, and this is an exact 4.6. So it's not like 4.61. Um, another Pacific Northwest macro lager that I would love to try. And then the other one kind of in that same realm, but a little different. And I, just cause I love Jenny cream ale, little Kings cream ale. 6% 20 IBUs. Rod, I know you've had this one before, you being uh, formerly you know, living in Cincinnati. I've always wanted to try this one because I want to see how it compares with uh, Genesee Cream Ale. And the reality is it probably doesn't for me, but I would still love to try it. The fact that it's in uh, the green bottle excites me as well. So definitely those four beers. And then another beer, and I don't know if they make it anymore. I couldn't find it on tap, but uh, another Pacific Northwest beer, Olympia is another one that I would love to try at some point. I feel like Olympia is kind of like Rainier, but just, you know, they're Pacific Northwest. And I that, that's what I would like to try. Those five macro beers. Uh, Paul says, okay, thank you. Yeah, Paul, I mean, honestly, Paul, I know you're, you're, more, you're more like what, in the Southern tier of Buffalo, but not quite into the Southern tier, like South Buffalo, right? Uh, there's, there's definitely got to be a beer store or two where you could, you know, buy singles of different stuff and try it. And that's, that would be my recommendation, honestly. Um, Rick says, word, just making sure. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, I hear you, buddy. Uh, he's like, just, just trying to make sure that I'm not fucking up here. Chaz says, what's the distribution outside of Texas on that Lone Star beer? Probably nil. Hon honestly, Chaz, that's the reason why a lot of these are regional and you can't get them. It's like, these are the regional beers that are beloved by many in a, in a regional aspect. But like, if you go up to say Seattle, Washington, it's like Lone Star is probably not there. Meanwhile, if you go all the way to Florida, you're not drinking Rainier. Just these special regional old school loggers, they hold a special place in certain people's hearts for, you know, just being like the first beer they had when they were of age or the first beer they ever got drunk on or whatever. And it's like, I would like to try those beers out. There's, there's a good story behind all those beers and they're just, you know, glorified macro loggers, but it is what it is. Uh, Rick says Lone Star is pretty solid. I would assume it's not bad. You know what I mean? Honestly, I haven't had too many macros doing the Macro Monday that I thought were just flat out disgusting. So, you know, Chess says, once I saw a guy asking the store for Old Style and he had no clue, clue. it's not still around here. Yeah. No, it's pretty much Midwest, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Rajay says, wow, surprise on the Little Kings. Yeah, I'm surprised on the Little Kings only because I first heard about that beer maybe like five, six years ago. And then I realized like, oh, you know, it's, it's available in like Ohio and whatnot. But I've never seen it going through like Cleveland. So I don't know how far it makes it like, you know, let's say east, like northeast of like Cincinnati. I don't know. I just know that I would like to uh, try it at some point. Um, hopefully a non-skunky bottle of it, but I would like to try it. Paul says, yeah, Lackawanna. So yeah. So yeah, Paul, there's, um, you know, there, there's a lot of different places you could probably check out in the area that, uh, that, you know, would have singles where you don't, wouldn't have to go buy like an entire, you know, four or six pack or something. You could just buy one or two. Um, so yeah, I, I would look for some beer stores in your area and just see if there's any that sell singles and look for like specifically like um, like a, a Czech style Pilsner or like a Hellas Lager or like even like a Czech Lager just just to see. Like I think I think that would be more in your realm of what you would want to do to kind of get into beer, like you know uh, craft beer. He says we had Lone Star at Cincy Beer Fest before. So yeah, I, I'd imagine they make like beer fest like that, but they probably don't distribute outside of that. He says not miss not missing much. LOL. Well, I mean, you could say the same for like Jenny Cream Ale, right? Like we, I, a lot of us have had Jenny Cream Ale. It's my go to for like a macro beer, right? But if you don't have it, are you missing out? Probably not. But it's still fun to try. The history is what makes these regional beers for me specifically. Rick says some other bucket list beers for me would be. You never had Parabola, Rick. Wow. 
He said, got to try Sukaba and it blew my mind. Yeah, Sukaba was the first first beer that I ever lost my shit. Like totally just absolutely lost my shit drinking. I was I I tried that beer and I was like, what is happening? I'm getting like toasted coconut from the barrels. It was malty, but it was just, it was everything I ever wanted in a beer, which is why to this day I love bourbon barrel aged barley wines and barley wines in general, but most mostly English barley wines. He's some of the revolution barley wines, no doubt. That JW Lee uh, Harvest Ale, yeah, like they have like 45 different variants. Uh, Russian River out of uh, outside of Pliny too, yeah. All, those are all fucking great bucket list beers, like and, and breweries as well. Like I'm, I'm there with you. Like if I never had any of those beers, and I, you know, back, like let's go back like 10, 12 years ago, yeah, they were on my bucket list. Like when I heard about for, uh, Parabola, I was like, yeah. And then I tried Sukaba and didn't know much about it. And I was like, wow, what? Like, yeah. And Parabola is awesome as well. But that's a great list. It really is. All right. So the next beer, and this, this kind of fall. The next couple beers follow suit as far as. Beers that don't have hype anymore, but used to be hyped. These, these used to be, I, I would call them beer advocate darlings. These are beers that like people would lose their shit on beer advocate over like being the best within the style or one you had to try. And I still haven't tried these. And so they still have hype in my own mind. The first is from Live Oak. So Live Oak is out of, um, they're out of Texas. They're out of Austin, Texas. And for years, and I'm when I say years, I'm talking like this goes back like 13, 14 years. Apparently, their Hefeweizen is like the best American brewed Hefeweizen and very comparable to a lot of the German ones. People would just, again, go nuts over, you know, talk about, oh, yeah, I think they used to just sell uh, crawlers of it or not crawlers, growlers. But now they actually have them, I think, in bottles and cans and whatnot. Now, as somebody who really thoroughly enjoys Hefeweizens, I've always wanted to try this beer. 5.3%, 10 IBUs, German style Hefeweizen. It is what it is. Like, is this, is, is there anybody sitting here saying they, are they really want to try this beer other than me? Probably not. Like, you know, but I go back to the old days of, you know, searching through Beer Advocate of like the top, top 50 beers and the stylistically, what are the best and all this stuff. And I always come back to this beer for some reason. And uh, maybe at some point I'll get to try it. Um, there's another beer on this list that an untapped friend said he is going to send me uh, in the fall for the 10 days of pumpkin. And I'm going to see if he can get me uh, a couple uh, bottles or cans of this and send them my way. So I can, you know, kill two birds with one stone and knock them off my bucket list. Next we have from Lone Pine and Lone Pine is another, I'm pretty sure uh, Texas brewery. Are, are they not? Or am I, am I? Yeah. Magnolia, Texas. So this is yellow rose is one of those old school, like American IPAs. It's a smash beer, right? It's a single malt, single hop IPA. And from again, many years, people talked about how good this beer is. And I've always wanted to try it. 6.8%, 62 IBUs. Just another Texas beer that it's like, hey, I've never tried this one. Used to hear crazy things about it. I want, I want to try it. I do. And the fact that it's a smash beer is pretty gnarly, honestly. So that is another a beer that I definitely want to give a go to. Um Josh says, I get live oak beers. Have you gotten the Hefeweizen, Josh? If so, Jesus Christ, man. I still owe you a beer mail, so I, like, you can't send me anything. But if you get the Hefeweizen at some point, let me know, good sir. Let me know. Because I need to get my hands on that. Sons! All right. Next is one that still gets some hype, and people like refer to this one as like the best like by-the-book like IPA out there. La Cumbra, or La, La, La Cumbre. Uh, brewing company. I think they're they're in Arizona. I'm pretty sure. No, no, New Mexico, Albuquerque, New Mexico. So they're elevated IPA, 7.2%, 100 IBUs. I love, I just love the, the fucking description here. It's pretty good. You should try it. Get elevated. So I've had a lot of friends tell me that this is a great beer. Um, but of course I've never seen it in distribution. I'm, I, I think this beer has been on Tavor, but I, I do not get, uh, I cannot get, um, Tavor does not deliver to my zip code in New York, uh, unfortunately. So uh, the one time I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is going to be cool. And then, nah, nah, I got fucked. So uh, another beer, again, an older school American IPA that got a lot of pub going back 10, 12, 15 years ago that I would love to try. So is what it is. Um, next is <clears throat> we talked about the breakfast beer earlier, courtesy of Josh. Dinner. I've never had dinner. I've had lunch. I've, I've wanted to try dinner, and dinner has showed up here a couple times in um, draft form, so definitely not in bottles. Uh, but this is their first ever double IPA, 8.2%, uh, and they dry hop dinner twice with over six hops or six pounds of um, hops per barrel. They use uh, Citra, Falconer's Flight, Mosaic, and Simcoe. And 
look at that rating on Untapped. And I, I know Untapped. Here's the thing: Untapped ratings, dog shit, right? But this is an older school, like you know, double IPA. This is you know, ten years ago. Four point five one is a fucking crazy score. It is a crazy score. Caleb says, "Cheers, Joe. Just noticed you were live." Caleb, let me tell you something. I hate YouTube. I won't rant because I already ranted, but I hate YouTube sometimes. Nobody knew I was live because that's how YouTube rolls. Thank you, YouTube. But I appreciate you stopping by and just uh, checking in, buddy. Just doing bucket list beers, Caleb. Um, just going over some that I've never had before that I'd like to try. Uh, Josh says, I think they have it at my bottle shop. I think it's a six-pack of the Hefeweizen from Live Oak. Jesus Christ, man. That's crazy. So uh, dinner, yeah. So want to try dinner for sure. But then I also want to try second dinner. So second dinner is, uh, I, don't, I don't actually know what the difference between this is, the difference between this and dinner is, if it's like, you know, a, a slight, slightly different take on dinner. I had an up, untapped friend, uh, like a, a last couple of weeks actually say, next time they do second dinner release, he would be more than willing to send me dinner and second dinner uh, and do a trade. And I don't really do trades anymore. But in a situation like this, I think I might do a trade. I don't know. like. I haven't traded beer in a long time because it, it's way too expensive. Like it's, I, I get offers every single, like, honestly, like twice, maybe three times a week, people want to trade beer. It's just like, if I did, like, there's no way it can't, could not afford it. It'd be ridiculous. So, but in a situation like this, I might make an exception just because I'd like to try second dinner and dinner. I think that would be fucking really cool. Uh, this one uses Amarillo Citra HBC 522 in Idaho 7. Shout out to Adam over at Mercy Beers. So definitely dinner and second dinner all day long. Uh, next on the list is, there you go, boys and girls. All right. So I've had Pliny the Elder numerous times now, but in the comment section of the six people who said that, you know, what's on their uh, bucket list, this beer is on your bucket list. This beer is on my bucket list. Pliny the Younger. Um, never used to bottle it. It used to be draft only once a year. Now they release it in bottles. It's a triple IPA version of Pliny the Elder. 10.25% alcohol by volume, 90 IBUs. Um, they brewed it for the first time, they said, in 2005. They, they built upon the Pliny the Elder recipe while pushing the envelope with malt, hops, and alcohol. Just see how far we could go. Now, there's been a couple of green cheek beers people call the Pliny Killer, the Pliny the Younger Killer, uh, like that Pet the Tiger that I reviewed and went kind of nuts about. If Pliny the Younger is in that realm, then it's probably going to live up to the hype but I don't know if it will. Like, I'm almost, I don't know how you guys feel, but I almost feel like when I try a bucket list beer or a super hype beer, I almost feel like I'm going to be disappointed. I don't want to be disappointed, but sometimes you are. I don't know. I just, I just feel like, I just feel like probably be disappointed. Josh says, my bow shop had tasting Pliny the Elder, uh, Pliny the Younger, Elder, and the 20th anniversary. They got the 20th anniversary. So they just had a tasting. You couldn't buy it, obviously, right? But even so, did you, you didn't go to the tasting, Josh, or did it like sell out pretty quickly? Because that sounds wicked to me. Very, very wicked. So yeah, Pliny the Younger, obviously, it's a, it's a bucket list beer for a lot of people. If you've never had it before and you like hot forward beers, like I feel like it has to be on your list. It's on mine. Next, this is the beer I was talking about. Pumpkinator from St. Arnold uh, Brewing Company. St. Arnold Brewing Company out of Texas. They're out of Houston, Texas. So Pumpkinator is just a big imperial pumpkin stout. And I first heard about this one many, many years ago. Always wanted to try it. They do. Now, this says Pumpkinator 2023, vintage of pumpkin, Pumpkinator bourbon barrel age. It is not. It's a vintage of just a regular Pumpkinator. They have a regular version, and then they have a bourbon barrel age version. Uh, Greg, uh, who is a uh, untapped friend of mine, did say he would try to get me this for uh, this year's 10 Days of Pumpkin. And he uh, resides in Texas, so maybe I'll be able to get this Maybe we'll get uh, Lone Pine's um, uh, Yellow Rose and maybe uh, the Hefeweizen from Live Oak since he's in Texas. Maybe we'll be able to make all three of those a reality. But, you know, I know a lot of you guys don't like pumpkin beers, uh, but this is this is like one of the few, maybe the only pumpkin beer left on my bucket list or that would be on the bucket list as far as pumpkin beers go that I really want to try. Uh, so I'm hoping it lives up to the hype, but we'll see. We'll see how it is. Uh, next. Surprisingly, I've never had from Three Floyds their Dark Lord. So huge, 
you know, huge Russian imperial style brewed with coffee, Mexican vanilla, and, and Indian sugar. This beer defies description. Um, so they do Dark Lord Day every single year. Typically, it's they, they say April. It might be May this year. I don't know. But they do it every year, and then they do like uh, they do different variations of it, different variants, and then they have a bunch of different cool beers on tap at Dark Lord Day. I think going to Dark Lord Day would be an experience, but also trying this beer would be one as well. I just remember hearing a lot of people say that this beer is just really sweet, like a sweet mess, but I still want to try it. I would love to try some Dark Lord. Like it would be fun, but I don't know. I, I, I'd imagine that it's not as hyped as it once was. Rick says, playing Younger on the old bucket list. If I was show, yes. It, <laughs> yeah, it is, Rick. And Rick, it's funny that you said you want to try other um, other Russian River because like I feel like I feel like knowing your palate and what you enjoy and how you view beer I think you kind of lose your shit at a lot of other Russian river beers. Like if you had a chance to try, try like their regular stuff, like the quality of their beer is, is just fantastic. And Josh says, yeah, I had the 20th anniversary. How do you both playing? We're gone 15 minutes, but I've had both, both of them. Okay. He says, anything from floodlands is on my bucket list. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You pay those secondary market prices, like $3,000. Is that what we're doing, Josh? Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll, uh, we'll pull our money together and figure it out. All right. So dark Lord, definitely on the list. Now, here are two from Funky Buddha. So Gregory, who sent me that cool uh, beer mail that included uh, maple bacon coffee porter and the um, Last Snow, these are basically the imperialized uh, barrel-aged versions of those beers. So Last Buffalo in the Park is their Last Snow, their imperial version of Last Snow porter, and then they age it in uh, bourbon barrels. Um, so 11.5%, 40 IBUs, it's essentially just the, the barrel-aged imperial version of last snow and then morning wood is the exact same thing uh but for their maple bacon coffee porter and listen the th i said it in the unboxing but when last snow from funky buddha and the maple bacon coffee porter were um you know came to the forefront like whatever it was like 15 years ago or 14 years ago or maybe even longer than that it's definitely was like the early 2010s you didn't have all your local breweries you know brewing a maple bacon coffee porter or like a vanilla coconut you know, um, uh, Porter, you, you just didn't have that. So these beers are more about the history as opposed to like being something different and special. So trying the two beers he sent me and then being, being able to try the imperialized versions would be really cool. Um, they're still pretty hard to get. And now funky Buddha is now owned once again by the original owners, I believe. So it's going to be one of those things where, you know, maybe, maybe I'll get to try it down the, down the road. Maybe not. Uh, Matt says, six years. So, so weird, dude. Feels like you started a channel before mine. Cheers, homie. Cheers, Matt. Uh, it does. It does feel like uh, I started my channel before years. It feels like I've been in the beer tubing community for far too long. Let's just say that. I still remember, you know, I, I mentioned earlier in this uh, live stream, Matt, that, that you probably weren't here, but uh, I remember just like sending messages to a lot of fellow beer tubers saying I was going to start a channel in 2012. And then six years later, I finally started my channel and I did it on April 1st as an April Fool's joke, but six years later and over 2000 beer reviews later still going strong so he goes and some of some of the assassin variants from top of goliath well as you see on my screen uh josh assassin is definitely on the list rick says uh no doubt Ari, other rush river have only tried Pliny the elder and largely lived up but those reviews you dropped months back definitely got me amped up with some of their other beers S yeah sts pills and uh hill was it hill 2 row 56 I think it's the, is the other one or row, row two, hill 56, <laughs> whatever the name of that one was, the all Simcoe Pale Ale. Fuck the rest of the beers. Just give me those two. And I say that in the kindest way possible. And Rick, Rick you don't, listen, Rick, are you seriously correcting your, uh, your misspelling there? He's like, <laughs> I appreciate it because I would do the same thing, but he's just like, I, I got you. I understand. I understand what you put down. Uh, Josh, Josh says, uh, I just had the vanilla assassin during, uh, and another one. Really? So I haven't had anything. Uh, I, I wouldn't pay the secondary prices. If I ever was, was like at a bottle share or something, that'd probably, pre, probably be the only way I could try any kind of assassin. But I would totally try assassin, any of the variants. Um, I'm sure they're amazing. It's an amazing stout. And same thing with the beer above it, which is the Kentucky brunch brand stout. Definitely would try them, you know, no doubt. I just don't think it would be anything that... I'd imagine they're delicious. I'm not going to be one of these guys like, oh, just because I can't get it, it's shit. I'm sure it's delicious. But... Is it delicious to the point where I need to seek it out and pay like secondary prices? Probably not, which is the reason I don't have it. So, plus, it's not even secondary prices with a lot of these. It's more like, can you even get 
your hands on one, right? Because they're they're so highly sought after. So, you know, the two beers from Top and Goliath, the Sasson and Kentucky uh, Brunch Brand Stout. Like, I'd love to try those. KBBS, or as uh, Don't Drink Beer used to say, Kibis. Um, yeah, so we'll see. I probably never get a, try, a, chance, or a chance to try those, but I've said that about a lot of beers, and sure enough, I got a chance to try them. Uh, Rod says uh, Dark Lord is another on my list. Yeah, for sure. Like like I said, I, I think Dark Lord might be too big of a beer for me to appreciate personally. Like I feel like it's a, a beer that I, I would probably enjoy, but I think it would be too sweet. So it would be one of those beers I would definitely split. Like if I got my hands on a Dark Lord, I would probably make sure that I review it with like three or four other people. So we all get a chance to experience it. But also I probably only want like three, four ounces of it. So is what it is. Uh, another one from side project. Uh, I just put their beer barrel time 2023, but literally any beer barrel time from side project. I love to try plain and simple. Uh, Josh says he paid 50 for blessed by Anchorage. That's the going rate for the Anchorage. Well, like it or not. Right. Uh, we'll see if it's worth that though, Josh, but uh beer barrel time from side project. I've had one side project, uh, beer courtesy of Curtis, a uh, good viewer of the channel. Him and I have some great beer conversations. He was lucky enough to get a canned, like um, barrel aged Neapolitan uh, Imperial Stout when he was at Side Project and he gave me a can, and, which was cool as hell. And it was fucking amazing. I can only imagine like what a uh, beer barrel time is. You, you can look at all the deets of this, like, you know, the, the different blends they do and whatnot, like time in barrels, 22 to 44 months, 37 months, the different barrels they use. Like they just know what their side project knows what they're doing with the, with their like blended barrel aged beers like blended beers in general they do a bunch of like you know farmhouse uh, saisons wild ales all, the whole nine so yeah side project one of those those breweries i would just like to go and drink at the brewery uh my buddy uh one of my untapped friends he uh he was actually at side project for like three straight days like a month ago it was pretty gnarly to see all of his check-ins and the shit he was drinking it was it, <laughs> absolutely absurd to be honest with you it was like fucking wild um, now here's one, uh, that I remembered to add. There's a couple that I remembered to add today, later today, cause I added these all last night. So, um, I, I made the list out, like, I think it was Thursday night and then last night or like early this morning. Well, it was like late last night. I added all these. Um, but I added this one before I hopped. There's a couple I added on before I hopped on uh, to do uh, the review in the live stream. Augustiner Brown, their, uh, Laga Beer, their Hellas. Right. So Augustiner only has a couple beers that get imported to the US. Uh, and I've had both of them, their Doppelbach and then their other uh their their export lager. But this is the one I've always wanted to try because everyone says their fucking Hellas lager is fantastic. We just don't see it here in the US. So um that's on my bucket list. It's just a fucking Hellas lager, right? But it's an authentic German Hellas lager. And a lot of my UK friends really dig this beer. Peter. Um, he, he, he enjoys it, uh, quite a bit. Uh, yeah. The, what is it? The smokers collective? What did he change his name to? From, went from the clueless drinker to like the, I forgot what he changed his, his name to, but I always liked the clueless drinker. I thought that was a good, good tag, but anyway, he loves this beer and, um, yeah, it's always been in the back of my mind. I forgot to add it though last night. So here we are. And then the last beer on my bucket list, just because they sent beer mails out to all the beer tubers in the past uh, week or so. But this is the only beer of like their regular, put it this way, of the like top 20 to 25 beers they have it on tap as far as like check-ins, this is the only beer like outside of Galaxy Bowl, which is what what they've sent to me. I'll be posting my uh, Hot Butcher unboxing on Tuesday. But outside of that, this is the only beer that I haven't tried. And it is their Dun Dun Dun. Now, is this like a bucket list beer in the truest sense of the word as in like, oh my God, I'm dying to try this? Not as much, but... Considering I've tried the vast majority of Hop Butcher's, you know, more popular beers, this is the only one I haven't tried uh, of those. And it's an Amarillo Citroen Galaxy Hop Double IPA. And to me, it sounds delicious, and I'd love to try it. So those are the beers on my bucket list as a whole. I'm sure there's more I could think of. And if you will start, if you wanted to start like adding, say, you know, different, um, you know, different variants like like josh you're saying like oh assassin like a vanilla assassin this assassin blah 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 i probably could get it up to like you know 30 or 40 easily but those are just off the top of my head if i spent more time really thinking about it i'd probably add a whole lot more uh there's you know what what is there like nine ninety ninety five hundred breweries in the u.s and you know everybody's putting out crazy amounts of beers and i don't know but those are the ones that a lot of those beers are on my bucket list and have been 
beers I've wanted to try for a good, you know, eight to 10 plus years. So they're very easy for me to remember and be like, oh yeah, I remember, you know, when I wanted to drink that, you know, back in 2015 or 16 or whatever. So it was very easy to add those to the list and, and remember most of them. So yeah, anyway, uh, we're almost an hour and 40 minutes and I'm telling you, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm getting tired of talking. Yeah, I know none of you believe me. So what do we got coming up on the channel? Let, let's 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 talk about what I got coming up this week and uh, going forward in the month of April. Tomorrow, Easter review. I have a barrel-aged pastry stout from Finback that I'm reviewing. It's a coffee cake uh, barrel-aged um, beer. It's a uh, part of their uh, B, um, BQE series. Uh, really, like I said, since it's a marsh beer, I'll just spoil it and just say it was really good. If you watch it tomorrow, cool. If not, get it. But it's a really good, really good beer. April 1st, Monday, I got a Dingus Day review earlier in the day. I'll be dropping that about 8 a.m. And then later in the after, uh, early evening, 6 p.m., I'll be dropping my anniversary review. And it's going to be a side-by-side -side comparison of two beers that maybe some of you have mentioned as bucket list beers today. Maybe. But I never did a side-by-side -side of them. I've had them both before. But I thought, hey, let's do a side-by-side, -side, ring in the sixth anniversary, I was going to say ring in the new year, like what the fuck? Ring, ring in the, the, the anniversary in style and do something I've always wanted to do but just never did. Um, a lot of other beer tubers have done this side by side. I just, I never have. So I finally was able to uh, jump into the fray and, and do the same thing. And uh, let me tell you, it was fun, but the review is almost 30 minutes long. Um, I anticipate people watching like a quarter of that review because it's fucking insane. Like, it's insane how long that that review is. So I don't I don't anticipate anybody watching that entire fucking review. And if so, you're crazy. Uh, I picked up shelfie beers, so we got shelfie beers coming uh, this month. As always, a couple uh, recommendations from viewers of the channel. A couple that I wanted to pick up, and just some random ones that I grabbed, some classics and whatnot. I have two beer mails I'm posting this week. Tuesday, it's Hot Butcher from the World. Uh, you've already seen a bunch of unboxings, I'm sure, from you know other people that you may or may not follow, like Kyle over No Hype Beer Reviews, uh, Matt over Massive Beer Reviews, uh, the Nerd Sense guys, uh, Tyler over at South Town. I saw them all do an unboxing, and I haven't watched the unboxings yet because I was waiting to unbox mine, uh, so I have to watch them. But I'm pretty sure they got the same stuff I did. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was cool to see them all get the same box I did because I actually contacted Jeremiah from Hot Butcher a couple weeks ago, inquiring about a specific beer that got released, Galaxy Bowl. And I wanted to know about uh, distribution, if it was going to hit my area or hit anybody, you know, it's just going to make distribution. And Jeremiah was just like, you yeah, know, I'm sorry we've been quiet lately, um, but let me get a box together. And I was like, ooh, okay. I was like, I didn't expect that. I was just wanted to know distro, but that's the type of dude Jeremiah is. And all of a sudden, uh, I had a, there was a label created, and, you know, send my way. I'm like, okay, he's doing it. And then all of a sudden everyone else had one. So it was like, you know, everyone ended up getting one. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Cause, um, it's, I just, I just, how much is awesome. They're just awesome. I can't wait to check out the brewery at some point. Just awesome people. Anyway, so that'll be on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, Cameron, who also posted in the comment section earlier, he sent me a cool beer mail from the Midwest. He has sent uh, Matt over Massive Beer Reviews a lot of different cool beer over the, uh, the last like year, year and a half, maybe a couple of years. Um, he packs his beer mails extremely well, like for war. Uh, it took me like 10 minutes just to unpack the fucking beers because they were crazy. Uh, but he sent me some cool stuff that I've never had before and from some breweries that I've never heard of. So really looking forward to getting into those beers. Um, and yeah, I, I want to do more uh, live stream stuff. Uh, maybe get together with some of the folks that got the Hot Butcher stuff, do some uh, even if it's pre-recorded, but maybe some hot butcher reviews. Uh, what else? Uh, and this year, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, this year there's a couple things that I, I'm, I'm focusing on starting. Viewer's Choice Seller Sunday is uh, that is a goal of mine to start it this year. And then the other thing is doing the tournament beer tournaments, the NCA style beer tournaments. The first two styles that I'm going to do in these tournaments: Mexican Lager, Porters. Those are gonna be the first two. I don't know what order I'm gonna do them in, but we're gonna we're gonna try to make that a reality. I think those would be a lot of fun doing battle beers, doing a tournament. I'm looking forward to it because as much as I love doing just the regular beer reviews, I love like when I Joe Joe Senegali, who I mentioned earlier, all of you guys know him, Joe's arcade. Whenever I see him do like battle beers, I'm always like, and he usually does like just like macro battle beers. I'm always like, yeah, that, that looks like a lot of fun. He does them blind, he has his wife form for him, he doesn't know. I'm gonna try to do that. 
uh, blind, see, see if it, these, these work out blind, but I don't know. Um, logistically, it's going to be a kind of tough for the tournament thing, but we'll see. We'll see if we can make it happen. But that's the plans that I have, you know, over the next three, four, five months into the summer. I also am planning on getting some new equipment in the next couple months, a new camera, maybe a couple new microphones, and it's going to allow me to do more on location stuff, like very easily be able to do on location stuff. Um, and I just need to do more on location stuff. So I'm hoping that this, this year we do some different things because as much as I love the reviews doing other stuff, I think would be more fun, you know, switch it up, even switching up, maybe occasionally like the location of room. I, I like reviewing stuff in this room because it's very easy to set up, but you know, maybe occasionally some out, outdoor reviews or again, on location stuff where I'm just like at a brewery, just reviewing or like at a bottle shop or something. So I think that's what we're going to try and do. We'll see if that happens and comes to fruition. If it doesn't, whatever. I'm still going to do the reviews at the very least. So, yeah, anyway, hour 45 minutes of you know flying solo. I am definitely getting tired of talking, which I never thought I'd say in my life. But here we are. So thanks to everybody who stopped by in the comments from uh, Paul. Uh, Paul Wright Lawns, go check out his channel. He said, happy Dingus Day. Also, happy Dingus Day, Paul. Hopefully, you have a great um, great uh, Monday. And then Tanner says, I had Crater on a beer man's. It was fantastic. Yeah, I reviewed this before I... Uh, Hopped on, reviewed it live, Tanner, and uh, it was really, it's really good. Not as good as some of the other Boulevard beers, but I also have to keep in mind that this is not as big ABV and it's a lager, so really good. Shout out to Tanner, East Coast LQ Reviews. He just um, brewed his first ever uh, beer. Uh, I think it was an extract beer, but it's a beer nonetheless, and that's and that's you know, it's all all it takes is one beer, and he's probably going to have the bug. Shout out to Josh over at Last Beer who paid fifty bucks for a blessed by Anchor. You fucking weirdo! You weirdo, Josh! Fifty dollars for nah, that's cool. Hey, you spend your money however you want to spend your money. I'll be curious to see though if it lives up to fifty dollars. I hope so for your sake. Uh, shout out to Rod. Uh, Rod's great dude. Not much more to say. Fantastic channel. Go check him out. He also said great stream. Thank you, Rod. Uh, he streams every Thursday night. I think it's eight thirty now, right, Rod? Eight thirty? Or is it like eight fifteen? You definitely go earlier now because uh, the the whole like, we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna do the live stream early so we get done early and then you guys don't get done early so you just start early now. Shout out to Rick. Rick is um Rick is one of the coolest dudes as far as like people I've met in the beer tubing community that isn't a beer tuber like as far as just like comments and just him and I chat occasionally. Um, I'm always curious to see what he's drinking on on tap. He drinks some awesome beers. Uh, very supportive of the channel. He, he sent me an awesome beer mail uh, last year. I still got a couple from him that I've been saving to like share with people, but I'm probably going to end up drinking them at some point here in the near future. I got like two left from him, but he's such a good dude. Uh, Matt, most of you know Matt. Matt's a good dude. Go check out his channel. Um, you know, he, he's, he, he just, like you said, he feels like I started my channel before his, but I didn't. He's been going strong for a long time too. So go check out his stuff. Uh, good dude, uh, Caleb, um, who, uh, again, untapped friend, viewer of the channel, uh, drinks a lot of awesome stuff in the, like, he's like in the, he's in Maine, he's in New England area, but up there in Maine. Uh, who else we got? Chaz, great supporter of the channel too. Always commenting, always discussing distribution. Great, great dude. Uh, Green Sobrero, uh, him and I are probably going to meet up here in the next couple months, hopefully, when I get out to East Aurora and check out, uh, Roar Brew Works and just kind of sit down and chill. And then go check out Poppy. Poppy, one of the few guys here along with like Paul Wright that don't really, you know, they don't do like, like Poppy does occasional beer reviews and whatnot, but they're not beer tubers per se. Um, and uh, yeah, his channel is fantastic. He's very honest, very blunt. He's hilarious too. Uh, good dude. He's originally from the Rochester area. So if he ever comes back up here, I'm going to have to meet up with him. Uh, I don't give a shit if we, you know, shoot content, right? Because we're content creators, Poppy. Just hang out and uh, get some tall tenders and shit on him because i'm sure you're gonna be like huh and then we have tater dom who uh i just had him on right here tater dom another dude uh sporting channel uh we also have who else we got up here vanessa kitty who's uh talking about a dragon's milk stout chaser after a cup of coffee uh she supports a lot of the beer tubing channels and then john rafferty who started it off saying he's enjoying it trogues little nader which if you've had that beer, I'm sure we're all enjoying it. And then last but not least here, we have Keith from 93 Lumber. says, cheers, though. Cheers to Keith. Love Keith. He's a good dude. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Rod. said 8 p.m. So next time I hop on fucking Rod's channel, it's going to be fucking 6.45 or something. We try to finish earlier. Yeah, you try, Rod. Yeah. 
The problem is, Rod, you like myself. You, you like to talk. You like to, you know, encourage topics. And then you got Mallory. But then you got Shannon, who then comes in. And then you got Todd. And then it's just like chaos. And it's the best thing ever. That's why I love the show. And then Rick says, cheers, brother. Happy sixth. Keep it coming. Appreciate it, uh, Rick. I really do. Or I didn't call you Rich yet today, Rick. So thank you, Rich. Do appreciate it. So I'm going to shut this down. Assuming Sam Smalley over at Short and Stout Beer Reviews is going strong. I might hop on his uh, live, assuming it's not like, you know, eight people deep. You guys, if you follow the channel, you know I'm not a huge fan of like hopping on panels where there's a shit ton of people. It's just, I don't know. I just feel like it's not as fun for me. Um, I prefer like a smaller panel, four to six people and people that I know. So uh, if Sammy isn't going strong or there's just too many people, anybody here who typically wants to chat, like or start a after show or something, Rod or Tanner or Josh or anything, I, I'll definitely hop on for a bit. Uh, if not, I'll even chat you know, privately if you guys don't want to go live. I don't really give a shit. But if anybody wants to chat tonight, uh, hit me up. I'll be around for the next hour or two. And uh, yeah, outside of that, I appreciate everybody stopping by. We got one last straggler coming in. Mr. Ridgeopolis. What up, Jordan? He says, cheers, 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 sir. King Buffalo, Joey, Joey, Joe, Joey, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Running joke. I think, Ridge, what was it? You you said I look like a Chuck or I sound like a Chuck. And he always call, and he calls me Chuck, Chuck. It's, uh, it's hilarious to me. I, I didn't know you could sound like a person's name, but leave it to Ridge to tell me that I sound like a Chuck. <laughs> anyway, that's how we're going to shut this one down. I appreciate everybody stopping by for another live stream. Be on the lookout for all the content going forward. And uh, until the next one, cheers. <laughs>